What? <laughs> <laughs> you're good, you're good. Hard throwing. <laughs> are you gonna are you gonna count down like a normal person? No. Did you already start it? Or were you... Yeah. He did. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent fucking radical. Orange juice. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the, uh, to the, the one WLTM. WLTM PM TM Radio uh, Show. We are we are we're a, a rock and roll band and we're gonna play you some rock and roll music. The uh, internet's busiest radio <laughs> show. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm true. That is very um, untrue. We the the internet's I mean, was, they, 100 orange juice players. That, by the way, that's much more accurate. Yeah, uh, yeah, evidently. Yeah. So as as, as always, uh, we got uh, mm. you, you got me as Dank. Yeah, you, you got Cruz as the Ruse. I can't stop partying, partying. Right, dude, is a great album. Mm. Uh, we got Cameron as Cam Jam killed in action. Menyazovu Cameron, <laughs> back at it again. <laughs> and we got Alex as Big Al. Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Oh, uh, who wants to go first this week? Does anybody have a vehement- nose goes? <laughs> No. Does anybody have a vehemently album that is like we gotta we gotta fucking do it? Well, we wanna, my nose, wait, wait, wait. nose goes. Let's not end on a bad note. So let's start with the most boring album we have. <laughs> All right, I like that. So the album, I, so the I album feel that like I picked. have very conflicting opinions. Okay. The album that you where are you gonna go? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're starting I'll, with I'll Ben Waller. Go, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in the order that I have in in my 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 notepad here. All right. So the album. Uh, Alex is dictating the order. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay with everybody. That's fine. We'll do it. So the album that I picked this week was uh, an album called Sha Sha by uh, hey, College get Rock. One out of the way. Yeah, by College Rock, Indie Rock, Alt Rock, Country Folk Rock icon Ben Queller. Uh, also notable for his work with artists such as uh, Ben Folds and Kings of Leon, The Lemonheads, The Strokes. My Morning Jacket, Death Cab for Cutie, etc. What? And, uh, Are you beaming? No. Nah. What has he done? He was, on the, he was on the circuit with them. He Basically, every live show that any of those bands had, he was the opening act, <laughs> as well as playing instruments on some of their albums. He was in a band with uh, Ben Folds of the Ben Folds Five called... Uh, he was in a band with Ben Folds and another guy named Ben, and the band was called The Bens. <laughs> and they, I think they have an album or two out. And um, he was also in a band when he was 14 called Radish. Which was uh, some kind of rock band. Never listened to their music before, but they got some. They got some airplay. He's from Texas, Texas area. Is it a uh, so. like Calpurnia? Like I don't know. Thing? I don't think he was on Stranger Things. Oh, um, <laughs> Wait, he's not in Remo Drive either. <laughs> yeah. But so the album I picked was Shasha, and uh, this album via the feature on Spotify called Discover Weekly. The song that I heard first off the album was his um, smash hit "Wasted and Ready," which I believe. Might be the most listened song. Oh, it's not even. It's not even the most listened off the album. Goddamn. Well, uh, anyway. And um, but it's at the it top. It's the most popular. It intrigued me enough to uh, to listen to the rest of the album, and uh, I was taken by surprise. And um, this album came out in two thousand and two or two thousand and one two, two thousand and two, I believe. Yes, and. Um, Seeing as we have a very diverse music taste here, I would love to hear what everybody thought about it. And also, I like the album cover because it reminds us of something we should all be doing twice a day. <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm like y'all dirty niggas. I don't know what y'all been doing. I haven't brushed my teeth probably this year. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I don't expect wow. I brush my teeth twice a day. I brush my teeth every time I have something bad to say about music that my friends recommend me, so I brush my teeth all the time. <laughs> Just that one. Just kidding. But I would love to hear what you guys thought. Oh man, uh, I, thought, I thought Cameron was going to jump on it. Alright. Uh, nah, I'm good. Can, go for it. I'm trying to do go some no fast shit. Go for it. Uh, uh, Jack, that's your name. <laughs> wow. Nose goes. You, you, you got it wrong. My name, my name is Bo. <laughs> uh, but, uh, of, of the group Time? Bo Jackson? Uh, of, of Bo's Time, yes. Uh, I thought the album was... Uh, the, fir the first time I listened to it, I was I, I finished it and I was like, 
damn, that was that was pretty good. And then I listened to it the second time, and I was like, hey, and then, and then this... you grew a brain. And then I was like, God, this is fucking garbage. But the last song is really good, and that's why I thought the whole album was good. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That's what I did with Jacob Collier. I thought one song was good, so I thought the whole album was good by mistake. <laughs> But yeah, so, uh, yeah, last song, really good. Um, he, most of these songs are, like, half of them sound like they're Weezer, and half of them sound like they're Ben Folds from Ben Folds 5. How do you uh, not like this album when half of it sounds like Weezer? They, no, it doesn't, it's not that it sounds, it sounds like... No, it sounds exactly like Weezer. No, it doesn't it, sound yes, like it does. It sounds, yes, it does. It this sounds like Weezer. It sounds you like, me, you, we listen to Pinkerton... The, those don't sound a the different same. album. That's uh, not I'm different. talking about Blue Green. green. Okay, well, no, yeah, I don't. No, this, I'm this does sound like Green, so. but Green is a bad album. I would disagree. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I think I do want to want to reiterate again. I would disagree, but that, that's the person who likes Beatles. So this is an album that came out right around the uh, one the year days of those bands that you've mentioned. Actually, yeah, a year after the Green album, so it's, it seems like could be a very big influence. Um, I don't like the Green Album that much. It's not that bad compared to some of the more offensive albums in their discography, but uh, it's, it's not the it's not as good as some people say it is. Um, and yeah, so on some of the songs, he sounds like he's like it's not even like Weezer B sides. It's like Weezer C sides. You know, it's like it's oh bring, <laughs> yeah, bring, yeah, bring back C side. Yeah, bring back C side. Uh, and then on and it's it's like not even like. It's not like the instrumentation is like particularly bad. It's not like his lyrics or his vocals are particularly bad. It's just like it doesn't feel like the songs themselves are anything special at all, except for the last one. And that's just like How did uh, how did you not like waste it already? When you say lyrics, do you mean the way the lyrics sound or the actual words themselves? Well, I know we're gonna get into that late that discussion. Oh, yeah, we're getting later. we're getting into that very soon. And I'm excited. Yeah, but um <laughs> I you know, like both both the words he's saying and how he's saying them, not no no major problems. It's just like it's it's like a lot of songwriters will say something about like you know you gotta write songs a lot and to get the shitty ones out before you write the really good ones. And it's like it feels like he wrote the shitty ones and said oh, I have songs and he put them on an album before getting the the good ones out. You know, and then I think okay, interesting so, that your favorite song is the last track. I think that's interesting with the uh, with the opinion you have about the rest of the album. If I personally think that the last song of the album, if I had to pick one that was the weakest one, it would definitely be the last song. Mm. But I know well, that you're you're all about the art and the emotion, <laughs> which is why you don't like you don't like songs that are fun to listen to. You want music that challenges your palate. Yeah. I, I can get so much shit from you. <laughs> oh, good. Um, well, it's and it's and it's not like okay, like when I say bad, I'm exaggerating a lot. This is like this is like a nothing four, special. This is like average. a four point nine. It's just it's just below average enough that I know I don't like it, but it's not like it, it can say I can say it's offensive. You know, it's it's a four point nine exactly. Um, you, you need know, the right context. Picture this. University of Texas, 2003. Your boy Ben Queller is coming to the amphitheater. You and your hot college girlfriend. She's a big fan of alt music. She's an alt girl. Well, like 2000s alt girl, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you guys are going to go dance and vibe with some college rock music on college radio. And then you're going to go to the campus, you know, cafe afterwards, and Ben Queller is going to be signing autographs. You know what I mean? I mean, that, 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 might be, that might be a fun experience, but it's not like... That's the vibe. But True. that's yeah, not, the, that's not like the I still don't I think this is easy for that vibe. That's just what the vibe is. I'm just letting you know. I don't make the vibes. I just sell them. Yeah, but on, on the songs where there's not just like Weezer guitars on them, the, it sounds he, his voice and how he sings and some of the things he writes is just so like it has been folds and like it's like so uncanny. Oh, and I would have to disagree. I feel like he's he, he, he's more Rivers than anything else. He sounds so much like Rivers. Like the, I, I don't know. There was one car ride. You said something about how Rivers just has the white guy voice. 
<laughs> and this is the Rivers white guy voice. To a T. I mean, like, oh, I, I can't, I, every time, there's some times he hits notes, I'm like, that's fucking Rivers Cuomo. There's no way. They, 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 they actually fucking switched himself. <laughs> like, they, they did a fucking switcheroo on this goddamn album. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Being uh, the lone individual that doesn't have this intense musical lexicon as the rest of y'all, <laughs> um, I have to say, so basically what uh, the breakdown for this album, this is like the objective breakdown, all right? This, it starts, and it's like, it's lit. And then Wasted and Ready is an eternal banger. It's uh, It has been added to the playlist. Alphabetically is the second thing on the playlist, which is quite interesting. Um, and then the rest is just doesn't sound like Wasting Ready at all. It just sounds like some bullshit that he threw together. It sounds like he's trying to make ballads, but they're just like white boy ballads, or go they're not good. Well, he has like it's like half of the album is ballads, and half of them are like yeah. whatever genre you want to call Wasted and Ready. Well, yeah, but uh, so there's, there's really Wasted and Ready part two and three. Well, I mean, those whatever those were were just worse. And weren't even memorable. So, A. Lamau. And then, yeah, the ballads were all trash. And, like, it was just so sad to hear, like, the first song of Waste and Ready, and then just it just devolves into, like, a, a whole lot of song? yikes. Hee hee. I mean, like, what would, like, would oh, that be? Oh, what if? Like, yeah, like, would that be a difference? Well, Is no, really because the then I... At the beginning? Or you I would have just been... You wouldn't have even made it to the end? No, I would have made it to the end. This was passable enough to not get the Isakov, but high honor. It, it just would have like ended, and then like it would. I would think the same thing of it. So yeah, that's yeah. that's all I have to say about Mister Quiller. But, yeah, uh, I was only, I would, for context, for the ready I was the only person who picked an album that was under uh, an hour long this week. We yeah, well, I, yeah, we, we, should, we should probably said... explain that at the beginning. Oh yeah, yes. For 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 context for the audience, uh, mm. since we it was Thanksgiving week last week, a lot of us were at our our family's houses, in uh doing things. So we decided to skip a week, and use the extra time as an opportunity to pick some longer albums. Alex did not take us up on that offer. Because I don't uh, listen to long music. <laughs> Literally, the only reason I didn't matter, I didn't have any albums to pick. Music oh, I mean, I, I, I only had the one, so... Yeah, God bless. <laughs> yeah, so everyone else picked uh, the double albums, as you might call them. I personally enjoyed Ben Queller's Shaw Shaw. I think yeah, there are some low points, uh, definitely. But I don't think this would be the worst album I listened to, unlike uh, some people. And uh, uh, Wasted Ready is a Killer, Commerce Texas... Hell Thomas yeah. Texas is Lizzie. Well. I know Cruz Hell is a Texas yeah. boy. Yeah, yeah. Any anything if you say Texas in the song, you're fucking it's a pass. You get you, you get above a seven, you know. I got I got a salute to the Texas flag. Bow you down get a to damn it. Plus one. They, yeah, 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 yeah. If if Dam had Texas in it, it'd be an eight. But um Yeah, uh one of the more listenable albums this week. Uh, I just think it's interesting. The more I think about it, the more I'm like the, the 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 description of it's like Weezer and Ben Folds, and it's like I think it's like well the piano peculiar. when the piano kicks in and like the two well, songs no, 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 no. What, that's what, Ben what Folds. I mean, but... What I mean is like it is like, but I definitely like if it this sounds like Weezer and sounds like so... Ben Folds, and you like Weezer and Ben Folds, then how is sounding like Weezer and Ben Folds a bad thing? I bad if it's just like the same thing but worse. Yeah, that's that's it's kind of how it is. It's like you know, I I do enjoy Weezer and I do enjoy Ben Folds. I actually listened to a a Ben Folds album at work today. It's it's a good album. I like it a lot. Let's do it again. Uh, but um, the, it's it's not it's lesser quality, right? It's like the the the, the Ben Folds well, album. That's, that's definitely that's certainly the question. And like, it's because it's because like. The songs themselves, even if, you know, he sounds like in the way everything is played, sounds like either of those other groups. You, it doesn't like the songs themselves are not like as good. 
They're just they're just not like there's so many things where I thought like oh like the way that flowed was clumsy or like the way that lyric came off was just mm, like it's. It's it's it like the 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 idea of it being like those bands B or C sides is is like exactly how I think of it. It's just like you know it's nice that he sounds like things I like, but he does not. But what I mean is like if Weezer actually put out like this is this is this is the like the B sides for the B sides that we did for like the Blue album. Are you immediately like that's gonna be some garbage? I'm not gonna even bother listening to that because that's Weezer C sides. It's like you know what I mean. Yeah, no, if I could get some blue that, seasides, uh, anything anything other than whatever the fuck they're making now, the, those two singles are just... <laughs> uh, dude, uh, dude uh, no, for real, fuck. I, I, put, I put this in a playlist on like my trip back. Uh, first off, I put the new Weezer singles, and yeah, they, they're, they're bad, so bad. fucking bad, dude. If they, the, if, the if they could be anything close to Shaw Shaw, then I... Then, it would they they would be making decent music, but they haven't made a decent album since like, oh two, ninety four. No, oh two. What the white album is pretty good. I'll say that. White That's album, it's the one that came out. Right, well, whatever Jack says after that, it's just like all right, go yeah. next. To be fair, Jack does have the. Uh, he is the Weezer fanboy. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Um, it's good. People should I'm give glad it a somebody, listen. To I'm you. glad somebody didn't completely despise my picks. Oh, and I don't complete this five. It's a four point nine. <laughs> it's a four point nine out of ten. I'll take yeah. that. Actually, you know, I've seen worse. Four point nine. What a bitch ass numeral. I it, it's it's just it's just bad enough that I know I don't like it, but it's not like offensively bad in any way. That's just it's, not, it's like. not Machine Girl. <laughs> yeah, it's not Machine oh Girl for God. you. Not mean for you. It's not Machine Girl. There's not enough electronic instrumentation on this album. There's not enough beeps it. and boops. Yeah. I... If the album was called Beep Boop instead of Shasha, that's a 6 out of 10 right there. Yeah, <laughs> plus 2, baby. Weezer just blew out and there's a 10. Yeah. If, if, if the lyric was just beep, boop, boop. Yeah, beep, but, but beep, Weezer's boop, blue, boop, blue album has B-sides with beeps and boops on it. No, yeah. no, do they really? No, they don't. don't <laughs> Shut up. Listen to the B-sides, baby. Yeah, I'm listening to the Z-sides please. right now. They don't got no beeps and boops. <laughs> Wait, damn, dude! It must be a fucking heyday for you because they're putting beeps and boops in their music now. <laughs> you, not, you must be, not, you must be, you must be killing it over there. It's like Daft Punk and Weezer made an album so together. Five and it's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bruh. there's not much to say about Ben Queller's show. Oh, also, show Ben Queller's on. That's that's him. That's him yeah. brushing his teeth. Yeah, I'm yeah. aware. He uh, he getting... looks a lot better with the hat than without the hat. He also looks a lot better in 2002 than he does in 2018. That is but, also ooh. true. Shout out my man Ben Quiller. Yeah, I think he's getting a lot thick. Yeah, he's got a wife and shit though. Oh damn. Yeah, Lizzie. Is it? Is it really Lizzie? Yeah. That's fucking that's good. That's why he wrote that song. Oh, dude, that's all. That's all that matters. You make the song, mm-hmm. you get the girl, you're good to go. He get well. He had the girl beforehand. Oh shit. He that's won. Why he wrote, that's why he wrote he, the song. He won life. Yeah, he's Jewish too. And he and he makes he gets to make music for a living. So yeah, he he has a series on YouTube where he like at least a couple videos on YouTube where he talks about the bikes that he owns. He's one of those bicycles or yeah, like bicycles. The mark of a true patrician. He lives in Texas too. I'm pretty sure. I think he's still out there in Texas. Shout out Texas. Uh, yes, I believe so. Or Commerce, not sure. I've I've never heard of Commerce. I don't know if Commerce Texas is a real place or if it's a metaphor. But shout out. It's going to take a lot of time before I can cross that finish line. Hell yeah. But, um, unless Jack has anything else negative to say about my music, we yeah, can, yeah, uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, if you listeners out there give a listen to the album, uh... Yeah, this is a call to action. Wasted and Ready in Commerce, Commerce Texas, and uh, Make It Up. And, the, um, the Jesus, etc. And Jesus, etc., yeah. Impossible Germany. Welcome to Japan. Yeah. Man, I love the Crooked Vultures, holy shit. <laughs> that fucking dude from uh, the Who on Bays, God tier. <laughs> You're really killing it. <laughs> Alright, what's the next in the list? The next in my here? list is um, Mark Kozilek, parentheses, Cruz. Okay, so, in the season of giving, so last week was Thanksgiving, and the boys are like, you can pick a longer album. I was like, I don't really like long albums. 
But you know, I was listening. I was listening to Mark Kozlek solo rap album, and um, you know, I've never finished it before this week because it's uh, Mark Kozlek solo rap album, and um, it, I, I don't know. I just, I just think, I just think it's just a, it's just a treat. I just thought it's just like you know, it's it. it Really, stop, really, I, I love my friends. <laughs> I really love my friends, and I, I need them to stop experience you go, this you Mark Cosley like solo in, rap album with me. So you go trick or treating so, in a white neighborhood, and an old white lady drops us in your bag. That's it. That kind of treat. So the first time I listened uh, to Mark yeah. Cosley like solo rap album was <laughs> the first time you tried. The first time I tried was on an airplane. I don't know where I was going, but it was probably to uh, Texas. Texas. Yeah, to Texas or something. And uh, I, it, I don't know. I think I had a existential crisis listening to it. Like I just, I just couldn't handle the fact that the solo rap album actually exists. Like it's fuck, it fucks with my head. And uh, I'm, I'm past that phase now. But it, it just, I, I hope it didn't have the same effect on the homies. But I, I just needed to experience, have y'all experience it. So, what do y'all think about Mark Kozlek's Mark Kozlek? I want to pause, and I just want y'all to know that this. Is the lowest week so far? <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just want that to be known now. But before I like continue to like speak any words for this podcast, but um, <clears throat> Mark Kosick's solo rap album. So um, you know, I unfortunately because my IQ is um too high, I um. I trusted my friend. <laughs> no, you didn't. You trusted Cruz. It's not. I, it's not just saying your friend. It's you. You believe. I trusted my sure. Mexican friend. <laughs> Hell yeah! And I was duped, deceived, <laughs> conned, and hoodwinked. Hoodwinked. Thank you. Into believing that Mark Kozlik actually made a rap. <laughs> Album. And one thing I want to I mean, make before love... you continue is that there is actually music that Mark Kozlik has made that is closer to rap music than this album is. He <laughs> almost actually has a solo rap album. <laughs> like, but to 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 uh, be at least a little fair to Cruz, did he literally say rapping at least like four times? I think Cruz heard the Cardi, the, the Cardi B line in that he, album. No, no, he literally describes himself as rapping. Yeah. Like, I don't at least. Think he's rapping like rapping. I at think least he's rapping different as in, times. Like, like, going on and on. Yeah, I do believe that's the context he was using rapping in a, a, at least one point. Well, even so, he certainly means it in, you know, other contexts. Such as context. literal rapping. <laughs> and, um. This album was great. Until, uh, so, what you, what you want to do to make this album good? Alright, I'm going to give you the Alright, all right, give okay? Mark Kozilek the rundown. Let's go. Okay, if you want to make this album good, um, you cut. Uh, you keep Weed Whacker, but yep. just barely. I, I'll respect your, your, I respect want to that. make the like album that. long. Okay, like you Weed cut Whacker. Sublime. Okay. Um, you cut Good Nostalgia. Okay. You keep 666 Post. Alright. Uh, you make... Uh, uh, you put the banjo song on like the the B side EP that you put out after the mm, album. Okay. It's still noteworthy. It just uh, I don't know if it should be right. here. So, Disagree. So, um, so we're doing we're doing the make it a, a single album exercise. No, no, no. Well, okay. Well, no, no, I'll keep Can the I... banjo song. I'll keep the no, banjo. No, 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 stop. no, 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 then you cut Sublime and Good Nostalgia and, like, maybe I cried during Wall Street. I don't remember the lyrics of that one too well. I think I liked Young Riddick Bow. Or I, I either liked it or, like, I didn't. Like, in, like it's either firm or the or other. But I'm not sure. There are other <laughs> options, thank the Lord. Oh, quick question. What did you think about Live in Chicago as the, the resident Chicagoan? Uh, as the resident Chicagoan. Um... I, know, I like the song. It was. Um, Did it have any references where you're like, "Yes, I'm from Chicago." Also, I don't recall any of the lyrics. Um, True. In that song, actually. <laughs> Seven um, minutes. 
I recall it's actually one of the few ones that I don't recall like really any lyrics from. I remember lyrics from like this is my town, museum, love for you, weed whacker. And then not the two that I'm saying I cut and then I remember I think I remember lyrics from all the other ones. Okay. There's a very heartfelt lyric so. in, in from uh, Live in Chicago called and nowadays during my stay I call my girlfriend and tell her how lonely I feel here. Nowadays I call my oh, girlfriend yeah? and say I love you and I wish you were here. Which is a reference to the fact that Pink Floyd Wish You Were Here is from Chicago. Mm. Interesting. Interesting reference. Uh, interesting, and like, interesting and false. Interesting <laughs> and false. I, was, I mean, you could have fooled me. So. Yeah, we should have just rolled with it. You could have fooled yeah, me too. Yeah, we should have rolled with it. Rolled with it. Pink Floyd is my favorite false. Chicago band. <laughs> but, um, like, I, yeah, I don't know. This album was just, if he just made it shorter... This shit could have been like respectable. Hmm. Um, you don't know Mark Cos luck at all. He should he should have doubled it, and I'd really respect him. <laughs> uh, well, I guess if he did double, it, I would have like greatly respected him. But if he wants to make it, like a better album, it this really like, just should be shorter. This is on the short end of Mark Cos like music, honestly. Is it? Um, I don't think so. Comedy at, at, at least, at least um, minutes. Ghost of the Great yeah. Highway is not long at the very yeah. least. Well, Ghost of the Great Highway is like an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, but it's not an hour exactly. 28. Well, yeah, I'm just saying, like, I mean, but like, so if you combine this. Everything I've ever seen by him is long, except for yeah, the if you, cover album. But... Yeah, if you combine this with the Sun Kill Moon stuff, this is at least not the longest one he has, and he has at least been one album that's longer than this, I think, under his own name, if I remember correctly. But that's more or less, you know, arbitrary. That's yeah, not I don't think there. you can know. It's hard to make long albums when it's literally just you chilling with a guitar and nah, well, he makes it work, he... doesn't he? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he not, did... not quite. He does not quite. He he made the um He makes it happen. Yeah. He yeah. made the incredibly <laughs> confident claim that neither him nor Ariel Pink is boring. <laughs> And you know, I've never listened to Ariel Pink. He really kills the Ariel Pink vibe, though. He really, he really, he really puts it out there. He's he's preaching to the choir. Yeah, I, I fuck because I've never listened to him, but like, I want to listen to Ariel Pink now after like it got the Mark Cosa cosign. I can t- definitely tell you, it's more interesting than this album. I yeah, like oh Ariel yeah, I, I know because I know it's like pop or something yeah. at least. I think you'd like it. It's kind of like really I, don't know, I, I wouldn't insinuate. say that it's exactly like kind of like Roar, but it gives me a Roar vibe. If you're trying to insinuate that this isn't pop music, then I might have to ask you to re- <laughs> reconsider. He's from Chicago. He's got to say pop. X. Um, that's thank, a, you. That's thank a, you, Cruz. A <laughs> I'll, I'll see y'all next week. <laughs> yeah, you will. Oh, why? <laughs> Unfortunately, for better or Everybody, Everybody's a fucking critic. Everybody's a fucking critic. <laughs> All right. You got anything else, Cameron? Um, you like the album cover? You like the song names? Um, the album cover. Album covers. I uh, song names. Um, I like the song names. I love my favorite album. My favorite song title on the album is the Mark Kozilek Museum. That was so. Good. I just like the idea that when you go into a museum and it's it's like yeah. it's just the Mark Kozilek. This is all the museum is. It's just this one guy. He sings guess... about the Mark Kozilek Museum for ten minutes and it's beautiful. My big takeaway from the album is just like in the first four songs, like there were lyrics that were like hitting. And then, like, I just, my attention span could not carry on any further after my love for you is undying. I would, just, I would have to agree with you. I couldn't agree with you more. It, it just ended. Weed Whacker, it was, like, uh, slipping away. And then Sublime and Goodness Dodger, it was, like, gone. <laughs> and then 66 Posty started making animal noises, which brought my attention back. <laughs> and, like, and, and then the banjo song I was, like, lucid for. And then Young Riddick Bo and... Um, it, it was uh, Weed Whacker again, and then I Cried During Wall Street was just like sublime and good nostalgia again, like I was out of it. It's truly a roller coaster of emotions. It, it's, it's actually a roller coaster <laughs> of like <laughs> awareness. <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, a solo rap album. Yeah, that's really all I have to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. This is, this is a real treat. Actually, this is. Tied. Uh, I move this from a one to a two. Fuck yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what time it is? You know how we do it over here at the WLTM Internet <laughs> Radio Show. So it's it's tied with the first week for the lowest week if you include my own album. Mm. 
This week wasn't that low for me. It was it was higher than I expected, but lower than I was hoping. Okay, so mm-hmm. uh, I haven't listened to Sun Kill Moon before. I've not. So I I I You're no not missing context. anything. I <laughs> I have no context for how similar the solo album is to the the, the band albums. So okay. coming into this and listening to it and hearing all the 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 meta of the album about the album being about making the album the album being about mark koslick who is in a band who makes albums like this but not this who is talking about the practice of making the album one thing one thing worth clarifying before you go on is that technically speaking at this point mark uh, sun kill moon is also just mark koslick with like session musicians, I mean, I, I've I've heard that, so I that's so that's why I wasn't sure like how big the difference was. One of the way you said like he's in a band, but he's like it's just it's basically right, yeah. still just him, right? So, so to me like the, coming in and hearing all this 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 stuff where it's like him basically being meta, me like in my singing room, am I talking one of the songs? It's like, uh, I I'm sitting here. I I feel like I jumped in to a, a long running series in like the the fifth installment. I have no idea what the fuck is going on. You play DMC five and you don't know what DMC is. <laughs> How did you beat that game in five hours? You're not safe anymore, Jack. They know. <laughs> no one's safe. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you think about it? The album or DMC? The album. The the album. album. <laughs> DMC on the on the Christmas edition. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure that counts as music. <laughs> You're not sure this counts as music? Is that what you said? I, I, feel, I feel like it's more like a, a soundtrack audio book. <laughs> this this. I'm, I'm yeah. Totally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think a soundtrack audio book still counts as music, but I it's certainly you. a subcategory. You cannot convince me. Like, the way he records this is he goes and he talks into a mic. He records a podcast for an hour and a half, and then he does an hour and a half of improvised guitar, and then he puts them together, and that's the album. You can't convince me that that's not how he writes it. <laughs> He's just I playing would. guitar to the, like listening to his voice back. Probably. Yeah. And just improv. Because it doesn't hey, even man, fit sometimes. It's quite possible. It's because he just goes. He's like, there's this, like, on most of these songs, there's, you know, no semblance of, of structure or, like, <laughs> mm, mm. different parts. Or beep boops. <laughs> or hey, beep boops. Still... You know, without the beep boops, I just can't handle it. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> yeah. With the live instrumentation, Jack starts stuttering and seizing. <laughs> <laughs> starts foaming at the yeah. mouth. <laughs> Hands start shaking. Yeah. He starts getting sweaty. He has to reach for his inhaler. He is foaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, so I actually I actually did when it went like when I started thinking of it as a, as a soundtrack audiobook, I started enjoying it quite a bit actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it started being funny. Yeah, I, mean, he's, it, he's just... I should say this. I I found this uh this quite hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so I found it very very when it wasn't hilarious. lyrically hitting and I wasn't just like fucking out of this world unable to pay attention like it was it was amusing just yeah. because of what he was doing one time he actually just start chuckling which is great yeah he, he fucking breaks that the album would be a one if he didn't start chuckling yeah. <laughs> well, well, because i know he's in on it too which i already could have been sure of but now that i'm super sure so yeah like like that's that's one of the things like with the, with, the, with the laughing and all the lyrics about him being in a being like going to shows and playing shows and like lyrics about like you know, just like so much of it is about him being a musician who creates music that is slow, and like him talking about mm-hmm. that, and it's just like it's it's so meta that he ha- it's he's just he realizes at this point that it's just ha- it's like this big meme kind of, and that's that's humorous enough. But then like when he's just telling stories, like sometimes it's just like when he's when he's like, you know, I'm all buffalo winged out and i'm like i love that i love love the buffalo wings and he says in the most like the dumbest way possible and then oh he's he's a he's a real character uh yeah he he also i don't run into mark cosliff on the street that's what i'm fucking saying he does sound like you don't work at a bookstore and just flame the fuck out of him or live in new orleans 
he just walks up to everyone and just talks to them. He just, that's this is what he does, I guess. He's he's a man in his fifties, forties. Yeah, I think 50s. he said he uses fifties in the album, but I might have been mishearing. Who knows? Fifty sounds right. Old people love talking to people. That's what it is. He's just a guy. I can't believe he's that old. Actually, actually, he's not just a guy. He's my, my guy. guy. <laughs> our he's guy. He's our really. guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Holy yeah, shit. So, I, 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 and the, the fact that he's a song that's about himself and the, the potentiality of him having a museum dedicated to himself in the future, that's, yeah, that's, that's so good. I'm supporting that GoFundMe. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm down. So yeah, so yeah, I um, I do think that you know it could have been maybe a little shorter. Uh, I, I... <laughs> choose your words carefully, Jack. Uh, I I, do, I don't Pat. I do not remember Young Riddick Bow at all, or uh. I remember Sublime. him saying Young Riddick Bow, and that's literally it. Oh, true. And I don't remember Sublime either. I do remember Good Nostalgia in Six Six's post. And I do remember Banjo song, but I remember that one more negatively because I liked it less than all the other ones. Because you hate American music. Because you hate American music. It's I a mean, nylon our... string guitar. I mean, the the, the... <laughs> I guess I guess that's also like a meta joke thing where he's calling it a banjo song, but there was no banjo. But like that, well, it doesn't mean the banjo song like playing the banjo. It's the concept of the metaphysical banjo song. Yeah, it's it's that, that, but it's just like you need a degree to listen to this album. <laughs> that's not that's that just in general, everybody. Mm. I don't think I can appreciate this album fully without my fucking degree in ethnomusicology, degree. maybe astrophysics, ethnomusicology. Thank you. Yeah, so I I quite enjoyed the Mark Koslick Museum and my love for you's Undying, as 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 well as a. Uh, Six six po six post and I cried during Wall Street. Uh, the dog goes hurt and the cat goes. The puppy dog goes vroom vroom. That song actually pranks me, dude. It pranks me every <laughs> fucking time. <laughs> you're just chilling, you're asleep, and then you with it. Yeah, it, 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 God damn it! I have very unique pets. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking so hit it, Cameron. You hit the note. <laughs> Everything he says just sounds like a shit post. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like lines from a major organ in the Addy Machine song that he just took. Like, that's something they would have put. <laughs> yeah, but you can hear them. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like something oh. they totally would have put in just like, I have very I have very unique pets. I have very unique pets. Yeah, just sample them. I have very unique pets. But the, the way he says stuff is just like, I have... Very unique pets, and he's just—he just like he just says stuff and like this. So he doesn't sound like he's there. He sounds like he's in like another dimension. Like well, he's a boomer, so he's somewhere he's, else. He's a fucking boomer. Um, he's actually not a boomer. But yeah, like, but in his heart, in, 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 well in spirit, he's a boomer. He's basically a billion fucking years old. He's beyond ancient. So, so I, I enjoy this. I do think that the, this this format of just of is is unexplored i don't i haven't heard anything else like it so i think i think the like the like basically an audiobook but you but know this is almost kind of like a, a crow looked at me except like not ultra depressing <laughs> yeah because he's not really singing uh in a crow looked at me Who, yeah, whoever that a, man is i forgot like his name the guy from the micro not the, mi the microphones hmm? i think it's on the microphones i think, that's the I think it's it's, yeah, I think it's microphones. Uh, is it off that one? Album? It's just like his own shit. Is yeah. It... Okay. Yeah, so I think it's there's a lot of potential so. in this in the format. Well, we don't shit is... just like this. I just picked the newest one. Are willing to say that this is the future of music? <laughs> I would not. I, say... I would love to make an album like this. I would not say it's the the future of of music because I I, I, I honestly it. think it's kind of its own art form. Yeah, honestly, it's kind of it's kind of like the, the art of this is separate. This is from the art of this music. is music for future people. It's 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 like <laughs> I, I'd I'd say it's it's like this is something you show to the aliens for dessert. You want like it's like you're trying to show aliens what music is. No, all right, this is 
And like you, you, you give them their course, you give them the appetizer, you give them the entrees, you know, all that good shit. And then you just you throw this one in at the very end. You just be like, this is music too. And you just like leave them. And you're just, and they yeah, never come back because like, they never understand. This is yeah, extra exactly. civilizations find the ruins of Earth like a billion years in the future and they dust off the vinyl. And this is the and this is what they assume all of this art is is Mark Kozula like Mark Kozula. I would love to own this on vinyl. That just I'm I'm, I'm getting it on vinyl for Christmas. So fucking good. You were not. I'll buy you a copy on record store there. You did not ask Hell for this. Yeah. I, I two kids and I asked for it. I got it now. <laughs> it's coming. Hell yeah. I think that Mark Kozilek by Mark Kozilek is. A fantastic piece of media. And I believe this is a sanctioned publication. I think we can call it that. But something that's interesting is ever since Marcos like released Benji under the Sun Kill Moon name, each album he's made has been less and less musical and more and more like extremely self referential. Because basically he blew up like a lot after Benji because of how much positive uh, how much praise we got. And just how much more like accessible it was than anything that he makes. And then he started putting out some some crazier shit like universal themes and common as light and love and you know a bunch of fucking. Uh, it's gonna get to the point where we're just gonna get like a slam poetry album. Can't which, wait. I, mean, I think we're almost wait, there. Wait, wait. Just listen to karate. Just listen and to karate. Mm-hmm. The lyrics on this album. God's here. He shouts out some very important things. He shouts out uh, my man Tyson Fury. He's referencing the fact that he's a uh, shouts out Cardi B. Cardi B, yeah. He's referencing me for the a loop because I didn't realize this ready. album was put out this year. Yeah, he's ready for Tyson Fury to get his heavyweight title back. It's happening right now as we speak. God bless. God bless. He mentions the fact that he's really into the movie Benji, which is something he also mentions on the album Benji. Um, he mentions that he met somebody who was listening to his music but didn't know who he was, which is yeah, what a lot funny. of like. There's like actually a, at least a few songs that deal with the themes of like I'm I'm meeting people who understand my music but don't understand me as a person, and like that you know that dilemma, like at the fucking bookstore and that guy was throwing a wet blanket on my vibes. That was in um, my love for you is undying, and he talks about she wants to go to Panera Bread, which is uh, a is recurring there, theme. Is there the a Benji Panera Bread in well. Chicago? Shout out to Chicken Noodle Soup. Yeah, San Francisco. San Francisco. Oh, it is. And I'd be incredibly surprised if there wasn't. Because there was a, um, there's a inside meme joke off of the Benji album, because he mentions Panera Bread at least like three or four times on there. And those are some of the more quotable lines from it. But I think this is Mark Kozilek at his most Mark Kozilek, if you could say that. And that's why I say Mark Kozilek? And I, well, first of all, I think that naming the, being a solo artist and naming the album Your Name is probably one of the chadliest maneuvers you can do. Like, that's up there. And I think that just, lyrically speaking... This is. This might be my favorite piece of music or media Mark Kozlik's ever released, just from a lyrical perspective. Um, because the really early stuff is like actual music, and then this stuff is like. This is it's like it's like an audio book. You're right. Um, and I also listened to these albums in a different context than I had been. This is the first week since week one that I hadn't listened to these albums while playing Tales of Majeol, so I had. A different experience at least and this was an album where i was just you know i was doing something and i stopped for a minute because i needed to listen to what mark kozak was telling me um the prophet and i really just think that i think he hits the nail on the head the nail on the head with this one he's just talking about what's going on in his life talking about what he likes what he doesn't like what he's experiencing keeping us updated he doesn't need to do interviews because he lets us know what's going on in his life this is it's by far the best blog. piece of like blog. Mark Kozak media I've heard. Um, and what I will say is that Cameron's like he wants to make an album like this, you know, a piece of media like this someday. But I think that every single week we make a piece of media like this and post it on this YouTube channel. Because that's, that's uh, we, we added a guitar track. We'd be basically doing the same thing. And shout out the lyric. Uh, there's like black that. people. Shout out the lyric. And there are black people there, like in Cleveland, that makes me comfortable. Not like in Missoula, Montana, where it's just white. Hell yeah. I've, I've been to Missoula, Montana, and. He, it is just white. He hit the nail on the head. He he drove the nail through the wall on that one. <laughs> and um, I just think that this is 
it's like this isn't an album where you put the songs in a playlist. This is this is an album where it's like you listen to the album. You have an hour and a half until you got like you know get to a doctor's appointment, or you're like taking a walk and you want to listen to an audio book, but like Audible.com is down or something. So you just throw on the Marcos like album. And I think that that kind of um, thing is really good, really cool. And I really just respect what he's doing. And if you don't like one song on this album, you're probably not gonna like any of them because you're getting <laughs> you get what you pay for. You're, you're getting yeah, you're getting what? How many songs is this album? Eleven scoops of uh, the same flavor of ice cream. But if you like that flavor of ice cream, that's ice cream you ever had. And if you don't like it, well, uh, go to Killwinds. I would say that this is my favorite Marcos Lex solo release. Probably my favorite Marcos Lex solo rap album. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I like some of the Sun Kill Moon stuff better than this. But overall, uh, Mark's my guy. I'm very surprised because I've really... Uh, I've, after listening to it for the first full time this week or last week, I don't have as much positive stuff. I think I, I experienced the mm. same thing as Cameron, but even less... Like, he, he puts me into an astral plane of I can't even hear the lyrics. But like yeah, the, at some point like I'm I'm in the same situation. I just can't hear the lyrics anymore. I, it actually just sounds like Chinese. I like two and a half out, uh, minutes into "This Is My Town." I I don't re- recall any lyrics for the rest of the song. Live in Chicago. I wake back up in the Mark Kozlik Museum. It's an eternal banger. Uh, I don't remember anything from "My Love Is Undying." I remember "Weed Whacker." Oh, damn. Somehow, and I remember "My Love uh, Is Undying" has like some of the funniest lyrics. There's some. There's some guitaring that just like fits his like what he's saying perfectly, and I'm like I, I vibe with that, but I don't I don't recall what he said whatsoever. Uh, a six 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 post got my eye because he's literally making noises. I like the banjo song. It's the one song I actually do remember. Um, but the rest is like, it's so out there. It's just so fucking wacky, and uh, I'm I'm glad that he's really fucking. He, he's he's really uh he's he's out here like the local politicians and preaching the good word hell yeah i think one thing i really like about this album too is that he's he's got three conversation pieces this happened to me like this is something that i experienced this is something that's going on in the world and social commentary that isn't preachy because i don't even know if he realizes that it's actually social commentary or if he does like if if you want to make an album where all you want to do is he actually about might it, not that's yeah like, that's a great point if you want to make an album that's talking about the state of like what's going on in the world and stuff, and you want it to be as accessible as possible to as many people, literally do what this guy did. Because yeah. there's a line there's a line on um, the banjo song that says, On the news, this is he's referring to um, I believe the labor voice says there's people on the news with expressions that look like they just found out a nuclear missile has been launched oh, and the yeah, world's yeah. going to be annihilated and a bunch of other stuff. But all that happened was the Saints lost the game. Yeah, that that song definitely stays if those lyrics were on the banjo song. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm I'm like, is he is he intentionally making a thing like people care more about sports, like people treat sports too seriously, or is he just making an observation because that's just an observation? Because that that is just it, it, it's 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 just as much an observation as like it was cloudy out or I was trying to buy a book and then the yeah. manager threw wet a wet blanket on the vibes and stuff. And I'm like, I don't even know if he... I think that Marco is like, like that substitute teacher you get who's just happy that there's people who have to listen to his stuff. <laughs> like, to, to listen to him talk, so he just talks. And then he's like, wow, that's kind of profound what you just said. And he's like, I don't even remember what I just said. The the great prophet Earl Sweatshirt once said, breaking news, death's less important when the Lakers lose. And it, it was very wonderful to hear that reset in a, in a different way. <laughs> but, but what I mean is like, if you if you had like a song with a real structure and music and instruments and stuff and the people are like oh people care more about football than they do about like yeah, politics it, it's, it's like it's like wow yeah if fucking preach dude who gives a fuck like yeah get just... off your high horse but when mark hose likes like i was in new orleans and i was like where's all the people and they're watching the saints game and then the saints lost and it's like oh that's wacky man let me tell you about when i was trying to get back on the plane but my plane got delayed and so i was walking around i took a picture of snow and then the guy was like, why are you taking a picture of snow? Like, that's weird. And he's like, well, if you took a picture of random shit where I'm from, you get shot in the neck. And he's like, well, don't pull up to me in the SUV then, man. Vroom, vroom. Yeah, I believe in this banjo song, he, um, it might have been that one. He was, uh, 
he was walking down the street and uh, a quote derelict child told him that he should smile more. And then he was in a store. And then uh, he asked no. the lady why it was so quiet. And the lady was just like, oh, it's because the Saints are playing. And he yeah, was like, oh, he bet. Was- and, he was in the coffee shop. And those were his two social interactions of the day. Yeah. And that, that hit me like a fucking He was brick. like, I don't care about football. And she's like, I don't either. And I'm like, that's a conversation I've had with somebody before. Hell yeah. So shout out to uh, her. Yeah, usually for me, it just uh, goes, I don't sport ball. And then they laugh. And then it ends. <laughs> that's but, your one social interaction for the day. That's my one social interaction of the day sometimes. But yeah, I... Fuck, I almost want to give it a three, but I don't know. It's it's actually just too long at some point. If you incorporate the uh, the five, it's a three, right? No, no. the the five is the five doesn't change anything except for a four. Okay. So shout out Mark Kozilek, dude. No, dude. Keep if, on rocking. Keep I'm, on rocking in the free world. I'm down honestly. to meet fucking Mark Kozilek. You should come, a, to, come to Atlanta. I just the thing about Mark, and this is what I think I respect most about him. Is that like, I don't know if there's a level that you can hate Mark Kozlek on that's like not. It's like you have to hate Mark Kozlek as a human being and then by extension hate his music because of that. Because it's like there's nothing, like there's nothing offensive and there's nothing like, like offensive as in like rude and offensive as in like, I'm not a baby, I can listen to real music. You know what I mean? Like, you have some music that's, like, so just generic that it's, like, this is offensive to me because I'm not a three-year-old person. I can understand what's going on. Like, there's just nothing... There's nothing that you can be, like, wow, Mark Kozilek is a, you know, he's a terrible person, musically speaking, because he's just being, you know, he's just being an honest man about it. And I think I respect that more than anything. The honesty. Because I believe that when Mike turns the mic, when Mark turns the mic off, it's still Mark. Still my guy. There's still Marky Mark. No funky bunch. No funky bunch. Boom. Keep out there, man. Got the funky Um, nylon string guitar. Hell yeah. I'm a big fan of what you've done, Mark. Like, I know you're out there listening, maybe. Mm -hmm. And if you, I want you to keep it up. Because you're a lovely person. And I want you to make an album with just you speaking. (laughs) I barely just no, no music. No music. You don't need it. Does anybody yeah. else have anything else they'd like to add? Um, Before I sign my love letter. I think Jack is talking, but uh, the audio is not picking up. I can hear him through the wall, but he's not. Yeah, Jack? Hmm. I remember he was saying something a little bit ago, and then it might cut out. We might be having technical difficulties. Hello? Yes. Hello? All right, never mind. You guys can hear me? I can't hear yes. you guys. You can, we can hear you now. doing some shit. Uh, well, I can't hear you guys, but I can see the, my thing lighting up on Discord, so I'm just going to say what I was going to say, and hopefully the sound comes back by the time I'm done saying it. Um, yeah, I can tell you can hear me. I bet. You fucking retard. Um, Fuck you. So, yeah, I, I finished the comparison <laughs> that I, I was trying to come up with earlier. I was trying to say this for a while, and I just wonder why you couldn't fucking hear me. Uh, but so the comparison I was trying to make, Mark Kozlek's solo rap album is to music what, like, light novels with no choices are to video games. I don't get it. Like, it's just... (laughs) I don't know. know. Mark Kozlek is the Dark Souls of music. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. Exact same. And I still can't hear you guys. So, um, I'm gonna figure this out for a second. I'll be right back. Well, I'm gonna... So, well. Mark Kozlik's Mark Kozlik, or Mark Kozlik's solo rap album, oh, as well. we here at the WLTM show. Uh, first of all, the views and opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily represent the views and opinions represented by the Board of Trustees and uh, Clemson University. Um, Trustees what, notes. So, but Mark Kozlik is a Dark Souls of music. I would have to agree... Because I, I both love Dark Souls and I both love oh, Mark right. Kozlik. I can you guys. And, yes, um, Mark Kozlik right. is the Dark Souls of music. <laughs> yeah, a lot better than the bitch ass analogy, yeah. Also, you guys are it's so loud now. I don't know what the fuck changed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Thank God it's Friday. Am I right, boys? 
Man, you know. Zambu Cameron. The entire time Alex was saying whatever the fuck he was saying, I was trying to say shit, and I just what like I thought you guys were just ignoring me, and I was like, so sad. <laughs> I, I was never ignoring you. <laughs> I was wondering why our thoughts were being per, like pervaded. I was, I was I was wondering how I was able to say so much shit without Jack telling me I was wrong. <laughs> you know? I was fucking waiting for it. God bless them. Welcome back. You have anything else you would like to add? Uh, just just the thing about the it being like akin to music, but like just off in the same way that like a visual novel with no choices is off from a video game you know mm -hmm. that's it oh, that, that makes the comparison more clear no, yeah, thank you for elaborating. Do you guys not it made absolutely no sense no, at you, first you said before but it didn't make sense yeah yeah but yeah so yeah i think that it has a lot of potential in this format and i want to hear more music in it i want to i want to hear someone like do one of these where all of it is the same story across all the songs so it's just in there instead of like them relaying their own stories they're like just they're narrating it's, it's like it's like a, a play like an in, opera an actual audiobook that's musically uh inclined that's an you idea know. i don't mind that idea someone someone's gonna do it one day not that i have to say and really what music gets made but i like it <laughs> i think there's a future here and if, if that future comes to fruition then we can, we know who to thank <laughs> And if that future comes Mark to fruition, Cosley. I get to go Our to guy. the Marcos Lake Museum <laughs> with my kids. Yes. <laughs> All right, what's next on the list? The next right on now. the list is The Powers That Beat by Death oh, Grip. Jesus, Lord. All right, Cameron, All right. give us the rundown. All right, so um, The Powers That Beat is um, the, the, uh, the number, um, the end studio album by experimental hip-hop band... Death Grips, consisting of MC Ride, um, musical genius with an ugly penis, Zach Hill, <laughs> and Andy Morin. And uh, the Powers That Be is a double album. The two parts of the album came out at different times, I believe about nine months away from each other, once in, one in 2014, one in 2015. The first was called Niggas on the Moon, um, which, interestingly enough, is the only... Um, Time the N word is ever used in anything Death Grips has ever done. And the second part is known as Jenny Death. So, um, Rip Jenny, Dead Nigga Storage, plus one. <laughs> and interesting. Well, probably as you may expect, or as you may expect of a double album that came out at completely different times. Well, actually, no, you can't expect that. There's a lot of double albums that just sound the same. But this one, Niggas on the Moon and Jenny Death sound like two completely different things. Um, Niggas on the Moon um, quite famously features original vocal samples from Icelandic York. singer Bajork. <laughs> More like uh, Bajork. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> You've never seen wit so quick. <laughs> no, no. And oh, that's good. Jenny Death um features not Bjork and um instead features like just you know what their music usually sounds like. Sounds more like what their music usually sounds like with the niggas guitars. on the moon did. But it still sounds very different than like um, the Money Store, Bottomless Pit, Government Plates, all that other good shit. Um, so I, I guess I should continue giving my opinion. So my opinion on Niggas on the Moon is that the first four songs are good. And then the next four songs are just worse versions of the first four songs. Because <laughs> all of the songs sound the exact same. They're just slightly different. And it's it's all it's it sounds like endless eight in Hardy Susan Mia because it it's the same thing eight times and it just gets worse as it goes on roughly. <laughs> I would have to agree that that those four songs suck. <laughs> but the, the first but the first couple yeah go for, just keep to going. be fair fuck me out is um hilarious. Because he's just whispering about um, fucking, which is incredibly amusing. 
that's that song is like a saving grace of the second half but while on big dipper just to make the shit whimper out very um unassumingly you, you, you aren't a big dipper I am not Big Dipper. Um, I'm I'm a Leo. Thank you. Um, and then the uh, Jenny Death is um the the much better portion of the album. And Jenny Death is I. Um, <laughs> importantly to notice that you may have not noticed because um you may have not heard the lyrics well. Um, most of the songs on Jenny Death reference lyrically. Um, previous songs on Niggas on the Moon. So Fuck Me Out and Piss Piss have uh, incredibly similar lyrical themes. And you know, it, it happens uh, in other points that I can't actually remember too well. I, I but... do know that some one of the songs on Jenny that does repeat Have a Sad Come Baby quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember which one, unfortunately. I didn't, I didn't yeah. do my ultimate research, but, you know. Yeah. Whatever. But yeah, that's that's always a very uh, just funny thing to hear when you're listening to Jenny Thus, just to hear all the little references. And Beyond Alive is an eternal banger. Um, the other songs are pretty cool. I don't really like I Break Mirrors With My Face in the United States or <laughs> Turned Off. And Inanimate Sensation kind of uh, gets old after a few times. And uh, the powers that be, my favorite color is Oh My God, Bitch. That's, that's just important. <laughs> <laughs> and on GP, he talks about wanting to kill himself. And uh, that's the album, really. The two halves sound completely different, as far as I'm concerned. I've told Alex this, I believe. But if you uh, have your Death Grips ranking, and you have these together... You're trolling, and I disregard your whole list. <laughs> um, they have to be separate because you could easily just slap niggas on the moon in front of government plates, and like that would make more sense. And you could just call that a double album, but like, and it, the album would be shorter actually because Jenny Death is longer than government plates. <laughs> so like, I mean, they like they just they don't correlate other than re- lyrically. So they just have to be separate. And also, problem with this album is that, like, since it's not really meant to be listened all the way through, it it feels very long. See, that's what I thought originally, and then I thought about the fact that it's not... You're not actually listening to one album, you're listening to two albums. Yeah. So, it's like... It's, it's, it's part of why I picked it, because it's, well, it's, it's more like, interesting it's, that it's way. It's like or... saying, like... It's like, oh, it goes on a little bit. It goes on a little bit in the same way that, like, listening to two albums back-to-back goes on a little bit if you're not yeah. trying to listen to music a lot. Pretty like, much. The, al- the album itself isn't too long because both of them individually are perfectly fine lengthwise. Mm-hmm. It's just because I was I was laying there and I was thinking about it. I was like, man, this is going on for a little bit, huh? It's like, you know, yeah, an hour and 20 yeah. minutes. And then I'm like, oh, it's it's too, like, you know, it's like a, 30, it's yeah, it's it's like a 35 and a 45-minute album or something. Yeah, it, something it's around, around there. there. And I'm like, oh, so it, it would be like if I listened to like two albums in a row. Yeah. So I so because so, I was originally caught up on the length, like the length thing, I was taking it down a bit, and then I was like, then you were talking to me about the whole like you got to put them separately because they're two separate albums, and it's like, oh, well, if you got to put them yeah, separately, separate that albums. Yeah, yeah, I've I've, I've heard Cameron say that exact sentence, but I didn't know it was this fucking album. If I knew that, oh, I yeah. would have I would have listened yeah, to it in a different manner. I definitely should have mentioned like, yeah, just listen to niggas on the moon then stop go like do something else and then come back to i, I uh, think Jenny i think Death. that mark koslick's solo rap album was more uh like betraying than than not yeah. pointing out the piece like i mean it's still i mean it's still fine like i think that it's like it's there's a difference but i don't think that it's as jarring as like if you went from jenny death to mark koslick's rap album Oh well, yeah, yeah. But that's a more drastic. Yeah, shoot. I mean, it's still very much like death. It, it, it's it's just, just like they get more industrial. Yeah, they get more industrial, and they lose the Bjork samples and like the the twinkling noises. Yeah, the, the shimmering moves. production. Because the entire instrumentation for um, "Niggas on the Moon" is just Zach Hill on like drum pads, but like like drum pads that look like an actual instead of like an actual like drum set, mm-hmm. and he's just like hitting up. And he just has Bjork's mouth just hooked up to 
just a couple snares and then he just goes at it. Which is a very interesting way to make instrumentation. And it's pretty interesting, but I just wish they would have uh, made it more like, I don't know, more uh, less math rocky, I guess. Because sometimes he's just hitting him. He is not like he is not falling four four like in the slightest. He just doesn't care. But I respect it. <laughs> I think that this album is very fun. This, this 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 you know compilation the, them both together is very fun, and I I think that MC Ride and his delivery is this is the first Death Grips project I've ever listened to, like just full, like full stop. Like I've listened to maybe a couple of the very you know the guillotines and stuff Tachyon. like like in terms of like the really popular Tachyon. stuff. But this is like the first one I've listened to, and easily the best thing about the entire thing is how intense MC Ride is. He's like it's, uh, he's it's so in there, and it's but that's you have to be, you can't yeah, you, you something can't just that like, sounds like this and and true. just have like, you know, just have the Bjork samples the whole way through, or just like you know, pred- like do something where it's based on stuff like that. You know, you have to have the guy up there just going berserk. Even if you do a bunch of effects and modify it, so it doesn't, you know, it's barely actually him doing anything and like with his voice and more just still the you spirit know. of it. Yeah, it, it, it's just like it's crucial to the the vibe, and it's like and every single song is just fun. Every song sounds. It's like some shit that you, you can do. You, do you want to mosh to this? Do you want to dance? Do you want to take a walk? It's like you can do anything. You can fuck <laughs> you with this take album. A walk. Yeah, I was walking around tonight listening to this album because I was like, damn, I like it. My favorite tracks off the album are the first, the first tracks, respectively, of each of the separate albums. I, I Break Mirrors With My Face in the United States, I think, is one of my top ten hip-hop songs of all time. Damn. I would go that far to put it there in that genre because that song's actually, it's such a good line. And I, I like just the effects on the song, too. And just the way it sounds. And I think that there's absolutely nothing about this album that isn't fun. And I'm sure there's things that are very technically and uh, musically impressive, at least from an electronic music and digital music perspective. But everything about this album is just fun. It and sounds like you fun. like the album more than me, quite honestly. And the song, The Powers That Be, is also very good. And it's... Fuck with that song. It's like everything I've ever heard about Death Grips is like not even close to it's like everybody who listens to Death Crips tells you something different about them because they want they want you to believe that they're the real indie music fan and into this weird <laughs> you've, never, you've never heard music like this before and then it's like it's just like you know people are like oh it's like nothing you've ever heard before I'm like well this at least is like some, it's like something I've heard before I've never heard the album but it's it's not like it's not like they've invented new music yeah it's, like, I mean, it's, it's really yeah it's way Still better music. than if they, it's way better than if they would have invented a new genre. I tell you that much. <laughs> and um, this may be the incentive I need to listen to more Death Grips into the future. What did you give this? I gave this album an eight out of ten. I would give if I had to give them separately. You actually liked it more than me. If I had to give it to them separately, I would give um, on the moon. Mm-hmm. I would probably give a six to a seven. <laughs> And I give and I give Jenny Death probably a six to a uh, maybe a seven to an eight as well, but like on the on the good day that I give Jenny Death a nine, I also give On the Moon a seven, so averaging that to an eight. Yeah, for me it's like e- even though I don't like as much the really industrial direction that some of the songs go, mm-hmm. like when they make it's really intense, I'm not as much yeah. of a fan of that. But it's just like the fact that it's like, oh, this sounds like a trash compactor, and then it's like MC Rai is just yelling, and I'm like, that's it's saving it a lot. Yeah, for me, like I combined, I give it a three, and niggas on the moon, I give it a three. Uh, out of and five, niggas... just so the people who don't <laughs> no, not a three out of ten. Yeah, a three out of five, and then um, um, Jenny Death, I give a four, but combined, since it's just like if you listen to them at the same like one after the other it like it, it since it just feels like it drags on too much for me i can't actually like, it, it just gets a three which is unfortunate well for me too i feel but, like i did i feel like i didn't realize 
how like I didn't realize the point at which on the moon stopped and Jenny Death began until I thought about it and like looked at the where I was at in the track listing. Mm-hmm. Like there wasn't a point where I was like, "This is the next part," you know. So I don't think I was as bothered by it. There was a point like near like the second to last song where I was like, "Is it going to be over soon?" Because I was at least trying to establish when that was going to happen, um, right? So I could get ready to you know have my notes and get my stuff organized there. But it wasn't necessarily in like a wow, like I'm the third song and I want it to be over. It was like, oh, we're on the second part of the album now, and it's something completely different. Or it, it's it's a different uh, album at least. Like it's not the same one as On the Moon, which I think I think it's a good uh, style. Yeah. Shout out to Chris. Yeah, I Chat probably used music. to like this album a lot more, but um, I think slowly, like over time, I've grown to like Death Grips less. I'm not sure why. It just it doesn't um, hit the same as it used to for whatever reason. It might have been like a mini phase. Yeah, it's a phase. It's not a phase. And now it's a. Uh, and now it's wearing down a little, but I still enjoy it. And uh, I would love to hear uh, y'all's thoughts. You know, the other two individuals. Okay, so. I've I only listened to this album once, but it was in a setting where I had to pay attention to it fully. I uh, uh-huh. I was on the way back from uh, Thanksgiving, and I was like, I need to give uh, this album the attention it deserves. So I uh, I think this is the f- no. I was like, I'm gonna get on a long stretch of road, then I'm gonna play this album. So this is the only thing I have to listen like pay attention to. Um, I think the first four songs are uh, interesting, and mm-hmm. they keep attention. the The next four songs off of um, "On the Moon" on the moon. or "Not <laughs> I, um, I think they're awful. I uh, literally <laughs> just I was I was like, please just end, please. Why is Big Dipper five minutes? I just just needed it's to just so go away, like. I was I was I was starting to think like man man maybe I just turn it off maybe I just it's literally maybe... just Zach Hill wants to flex with his drumsticks <laughs> so it's five minutes yeah he can do whatever he wants but it sucked but um I liked inanimate session sensation um why a bitch got a lie I like that one I, so good. I like um I think my two favorite songs are Century of Dawn and On GP. And I respect the last song being called Death Grip 2.0. <laughs> so oh, yeah. I, I, I definitely really like the second half. And, or yeah, Jenny Death, is that what it's called? Yes. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. I think. Jen would do. I, I really do enjoy mm-hmm. MC Ride yelling. If he could yell more. So good. I love it. Uh, keep it it's up. It's like he. But, yeah. but it's not to the point where it's like, Tuck! like, they don't fucking kill. They don't, like, make it the main focal. Tech! Yeah, they don't. I, I want there to be a point. Like, my apprehension with Dead Crips is that I want to believe that he's that intense on everything. And if he's not, then it's gonna be worse. Yeah. Um. It's, I think he's I'll probably just... more intense than usual on Jenny Death. It's so fucking good. You need the energy when you're making music like this. You can't have this, and then Mark Coe's like be the lead singer. As much as I would love to see the collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> That would be a intense. real man's collaboration. Yeah, that's none of this shit, Bedork that's stuff. The correct timeline. They work for Bjork. Robin Pattinson played guitar on uh, one of their previous albums. The guy from Star from. It's not Twilight? some shit that could never happen. Yeah, the guy from Twilight. We're, I mean, they were in the studio with Varg too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> in the correct timeline, they were in the studio yeah. with Varg, but. <laughs> Can't win all. So good, but yeah. Oh. Shout out Death Grips. I thought that the album. Wait, no, Harry spoke. Jack, yeah, yeah, Jack is Jackster. What the hell? Uh, is he doing? Right. Yeah, I've, I've I've listened to this album before. Well, I couldn't agree more, Jack. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So <laughs> now that the Beatles White album. Yeah, yeah. So no, I can't say. Oh, but yeah. So I I have listened to this album before. Uh. I, I haven't listened to everything Death Stars has put out. Yeah. But um, I have listened to this one and some of the other ones. Now, I like uh, I like some a lot. I think Jenny Death is actually probably my favorite Death Grips project. Um, in particular, I do like the tracks towards the later half that include a lot more guitar. 
uh, which I, I thought was always an interesting thing for them, uh, because it really em embraces the elements of them that aren't at all hip hop, and that's it's a uh, it's cool. Um, On GP is my favorite Death Grip song, mm. um, and I and I, I do like the the rest of Jenny Death quite a bit. Um, On the Moon, as I will call it, um, he's I <laughs> not him. No, y'all like Nottam apparently. No, Nottam not, uh, uh, is uh, <laughs> Nottam is interesting. I don't know if I I quite actually like it. It's just like it, it's. I feel like Nottam's... it certainly sounds like niggas on the moon. Nottam is not it, is what Jack's trying to say. No, I mean it's it's, it's like it's pro it's like it's like. It's it's less it than Jenny Death, as I say that. Um. I don't know. It's it's something that I couldn't listen to all the time. Something that's it's much less up my alley than than Jenny Death is. Um, though I do I do generally enjoy it. Um, yeah. I, I I think that um. I I do I do really like when they they tend to use like kind of industrial rock style production. Um, they have a yeah. song on the the latest album that's quite like that. And this is is really good black paint, um, and uh, yeah. I always thought really, it's weird yeah. that industrial rock is just the term they use to make music that the music industry wants you to make. Mm. <laughs> it's it's industrial, you know what I'm saying? It's industrial. Oh right, right. And you know, I thought it was interesting when I heard it described as that because I'm like, this doesn't sound like into the industry standard at all. And I thought about it more, and I realized. I mean, I guess it is really. Yeah. Well, at the point where experimentalists cease to mean anything. That's very true. I I they don't know. These days I... can just put some quirky shit in the production, disable yeah. out experimental. But I, you know, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Because, <laughs> I mean, top, top forty shit still sounds like top forty shit. I'm just gonna say that. Like, uh, we're, no, no, no. we're not going that high up. Not that high yeah, up. I'm talking like top sixty. Yeah. <laughs> top, top I'm talking 100. like in the 100 to 200. Yeah, in the even, even, even far top. below that, there's a lot of interesting things. Like even in the underground, there's shit that people call experimental that just isn't experimental. Yeah, yeah. it's an interesting social construct, but <laughs> you know, to each his own. Yeah. Does anybody else have any other comments about um, on the moon or Jenny Geth, Collectively, the powers that be. Uh, the, the, the instrumental for inanimate sensation is very clever. I like it. Um, what kind of yeah. IQ do you have to have to understand it? You have to, uh, probably like 169, I think. Oh, geez. So you have to have seen the first two seasons of Rick and Morty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, like you, you have to be midway through season three yeah, to, 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 really get, much, to really get inanimate sensation. Um, break rooms with my face is also, you know, just. It's a, it's a baller opener, you know. It's just it's, it's such a good line. I break mirrors with my face. He's just, he's just in the United States. <laughs> I love when we refer to this country as the United States. <laughs> it's oh my god! Shout out on C. Where are they from? Los Angeles, Sacramento, yes. Sacramento, California. Okay. Close yes. Enough. Yeah, I think Sacramento, the United Arizona. States. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure MC Ryan invented Bitcoin. Invented Bitcoin. Yeah, uh, that sounds accurate enough. <laughs> I'll let it slide. I think it's interesting that if you tape, you edit the name a little bit, MC Ryan becomes McRib. <laughs> I was thinking about that a lot. I was going to McDonald's with me this album, and I was hearing him sing, and I looked and they saw that there's a deal where if you get a McRib, a, a McRib meal, you can get another McRib for a dollar fifty. And I'm like, damn, McRib's in this band, ain't he? And I was like, oh, MC Ryan. <laughs> Um, that's just the, that's just what was going on about oh. Mark Kozlik moment right there. That's something I would make an observation about and put in my, uh, my podcast. <laughs> oh, so I got one left, right? Yes, we have one left. And I want to oh. preface before we say, I, I just want to say out of the four albums here, I had heard of three of the bands before going into here. I had never <laughs> heard of this album that Jack recommended. 
I never heard yeah. this band before. It's, it's so pretty I, underground. I was, <laughs> all right, Jack, that's your segue. What do we got? What do we got? <laughs> Godfathers of indie rock. Yeah, they, the most the most independent rock group of all time. No one's ever heard of them except for me, which is why they're the most independent of all time. They're called the Beatles. Um, the Seattle's? I think, I, I think they're from Seattle, and that's like the, the joke is that, you know, Beattle sounds like Seattle. Um, but I, I, I don't get how this is funny at all. I'm contracting cancer. <laughs> 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 um <laughs> yeah so uh the beatles obviously you know big deal uh big deal to probably, some they're they're whether you realize it or not they are a very big deal to you <laughs> whatever you say bud music um, was better when john lennon was beating his wife <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he so was still beatles alive are. today he'd be beating his wife now Hell yeah. So the, the Beatles were John Lennon, Ringo. Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr. What's um, the other nigga's name? The one that got kicked out? Uh, oh, when, when, they were the, when they were the quarry men? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah, sure. the no, they were, still, they were the Beatles at that point, but it was Pete Best. Best. And they kicked him out because he looked better than all of them. <laughs> Damn, really? Pete Best, more like he Pete probably Wilson. did. You know, it, it's, he, apparently he was also a bad drummer, but like... What? <laughs> <laughs> How do you be a bad drummer? Hey, what do you already no. have Ringo Starr? Anyway, the White <laughs> Album is, I think it's like their their 10th album. Um, It's their self-titled album. Why's it gotta be the White Album? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's the White Album means they're white supremacists and they really hate black people. Um, That's All why, right. this, that's what the song Helter Skelter is That's why I hate about. this album. As, as, I, as, yeah, yeah. As, I'm glad as, I finally got to hear the uh, the Charles Manson epic. Yeah, yeah, as 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 the great hero of our time, Charles Manson <laughs> taught to me, uh, Helter Skelter is a message about the un- the oncoming race war, um, and you know the Beatles were prophets. Um, yeah, so they were making the a prophet. Album, I'll tell you that much. The White Album was, is like the the first right. Beatles that shut up. <laughs> <laughs> the, the White Album is like the first Beatles album that they made while they all hated each other. Um, and they basically could not write songs together anymore and they couldn't like cooperate. So they all like started just like like w- making songs where it would just be like three of them or two of them. And like they'd all do stuff at separate times and they come in and they write their own shit. And they, they, then they were like, my song has to get on the album. No, my song has to get on the album. So that like, we'll, we'll, why... we'll, put, we'll put all the songs on the album. That explains why <laughs> this is the... I, I'm so glad you said that. Because I now know. I want I want it on record. This is the least cohesive album to ever exist. It's very not cohesive. And I, I'm so glad I know why. Because they, they literally just hard trolled themselves and each other. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, they. So yeah, there's there actually are some noticeable trends among the songs by the individuals. Like for example, all of Paul, a lot of Paul's songs are just him going into a random genre and being like, hmm, "I'm gonna make a song doing this." And he just for example, it, and... all the John Lennon songs sound bad. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah, it's time out. <laughs> um. So yeah, this is uh. Also notable is that, like, you know, George Harrison really starts pumping up. I mean, he only has, like, four songs in this album, but that's still, like, a higher percentage than on previous albums where he would only have, like, one song written. And this is the first album to feature a Ringo Starr song. There are several songs on previous albums where Ringo Starr would sing, but they were all written by John for him. Um, This one, specifically the song Don't Pass Me By, is written by Ringo Starr himself. And, uh, yeah. So, um... I like the I like this album quite a bit, but I didn't pick it because I thought it, you guys would like it. I picked it because I thought there's a lot of interesting discussion to be had about the Beatles in this album in particular. Um, there's a lot of stories behind individual songs, so you know we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to it. What do you guys think? All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna start off. Okay. I I hate the Beatles. I despise. I don't hate the Beatles. I hate the Beatles. I hate. I uh, yeah. I definitely d- dislike. What I want to say oh, before yeah. Cruz before Cruz continues, I want to say that nobody else has ever had the opinion. Yeah. That Cruz also, has about they've the never had this opinion. Um, I and think I, most I, again, of the opinion. Cruz, 
again before crew starts, I want to say another reason I picked this is because I knew we had an unbearable hipster in the group. So yes. continue. So, well, we also have an unbearable <laughs> album. So uh, yeah, we, have, yeah. we, have, we, have, we have three unbearable hipsters in the group. <laughs> yeah. So I guess so. I I hate the. But only one of us listens to justice. That's thinking about you. <sighs> I hate the the culture around the Beatles being ooh the best rock band of all time. I hate, I hate the idea of the Beatles and what they represent to people today. I don't actually like hate. I can't say I hate this music. I simply dislike it. But yeah. Cruz continues. Okay, so I agree with that. But I still hate the music. Um, <laughs> I think it sucks. I think it's campy. I think that there's only um, four decent songs. In the whole album. Holy shit! And yeah, um, I need to count. Four of thirty. Yeah. That's uh, I hit or miss. I, <laughs> <laughs> I it just. I I guess I just have a small brain. I just don't get it. Uh, I don't get the love for the Beatles. I I I first of all I wasn't born in 1930, so I wasn't I wasn't of the age where the Beatles were cool. Or uh, coming out and revolutionizing music. I love music. Like I, I don't give a shit who wrote the um, the songs, who, how they were friends, or what, what, whatever happened. Uh, the only thing I care about is John Lennon beating his wife. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Also, Ringo Starr is the worst drummer in ev- I've ever had to like depict that there's a drummer. He's he makes he makes the songs bad like you you're just like oh my god uh, the guitar is fine but listen to these drums what is he doing he's doing nothing he doesn't do anything ever the the like the the vocals are fine uh, i can't tell the difference between uh any of them uh none of them are distinct the same they uh, all so literally like saying who sung on what doesn't fucking matter to me they're all bad. Yeah, I, Alex and Jack can jack themselves off about that in the yeah, podcast. Yeah, I don't, don't, I, I, don't give a shit. I who, have the Wikipedia article open. I don't care who <laughs> wrote it. Do not link it to me. Uh, I, I will it. say I only have one of these saved, and it's Don't Pass Me By by my favorite Thank drummer, Ringo Starr, apparently. <laughs> and um, the, the only other songs that, like, you know, Revolution's fine. Revolution 1, because it's, it's in movies. So I can have a, 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 a positive... A positive like relation to this um also one of my favorite underground punk rock bands covered back in the ussr Ooh. Ooh. and uh that song slaps i own that shit on vinyl uh, but this version's uh, a lesser of that who's that free parking or it's um the lillingtons <laughs> close enough lillingtons really kill it uh they should really learn from him but uh i i i i enjoy Lennon's solo work um that one album he did that has a uh, imagine i believe the the yeah. album called imagine yes i like imagine <laughs> um but all all of this like oobla di oobla da that's fine it's Ooh. a good song oh you think it's fine okay okay so oobla di oh, oobla da <laughs> is is the first of many songs that john lennon would famously hate and call paul's granny songs because he thought they were it was music for grannies <laughs> and so yeah, i love lot, that they hate each other this I, is great people, it's ironic now because all beatles music is music for grannies <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. true but yeah so so people most a lot of people really do not like that song <laughs> so the four songs are uh revolution don't pass me by you know you gotta hit him with a while my guitar gently weeps and oh, ubla yeah. da like the rest are just, just get out. He's gonna, he's gonna get it right off. one day. Did you notice Revolution sounding different than when you heard in movies? Uh, it yes. is actually, it is a, it is a it very is a different, different take. Mix. No. Yeah. Don't the uh, the it. single version is much slower or much more like downbeat. The single version is just called Revolution instead of Revolution One. It's a it's a it's a hard rock version. Mm-hmm. Black Sabbath would famously cite it as their main influence for all their music. <laughs> Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Black Sabbath. Today. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's like Saturday, some shit. Why did you pick this album, Jack? 
It's like because it's, it's, it's not even. I don't even hate it as much as you want me to. It's just I hate that oh, I had to listen to it. I didn't. I didn't pick it because I wanted you to hate it. I picked it because there's a lot of interesting things to talk about. Like, okay. What did you think, Kevin? Before me and Jack have a 45 minute argument. All right. So like, <laughs> all right. I'll give you the breakdown. Uh, I already said least cohesive album I've ever heard in my entire life. I don't think that could ever be topped. I, I actually think it's impossible. I think it's literally impossible to like for obviously like you you could fuck around and make a less cohesive album than this if you like really wanted to. But it's but never if gonna happen. You, if, uh, like, it's never gonna happen because people like, like try to make albums and like they don't try to troll. So right. out of any album where people like the, the, they're not like like it's concrete they trolling, that. they're not like tungsten trolling. You know, like that's never gonna happen. Back in the USSR. Well, I'll be in... Okay, so if I were born in 1935... <laughs> 19, 1940, actually, right? Because this is... This was like 68? This is like... Yeah, 68. So I gotta I got be in the 20s, right? So 1940... Yeah, late 20s, you know, I'm... I'm trying to... I'm trying to finish off the glory days with a bang. And I'm white, <laughs> which is important. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can imagine myself at... A uh, some form of shindig, in which that song is playing, and me somehow making some form of rhythmic movement. <laughs> However, <laughs> as an opening song to an album, absolute garbage. Okay, oh, um, moving on. Happiness is a warm gun is I, I actually liked it. Um, oh, I have to unsave all this now because I don't I don't need to have it saved. Um. I, I, what else do I even remember? I remember Helter Skelter because I was like, oh, I finally heard the song. Couldn't understand any of the lyrics, so I mean, that nigga's bugging, but whatever. And then uh, I remember Revolution 9 because it just sounded like a shitty major organ the Addy Machine ripoff. True, uh, true. Yeah, that, 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 that sucks. Is, that, that is John Lennon trying to be a pseudo intellectual. He's trying to be like, yes, I am so deep. I do. And he failed. He needs to stick to beating women. Yeah, it's, it's, I do not like Revolution 9 either. You can stick to making the fried rice. <laughs> and so, this, this, this song for me is a, uh, I mean, this album for me is a, a one and a half out of 30. Um, however, I cannot say that I hate it. I cannot give it a zero. Because I do not actually hate it. For some reason, like, None of this compels me to actual hatred. So it is just hanging on to one point for dear life. But it has it. So <laughs> ain't that some shit. And uh Um Yeah, White Album. Um I I I I love that they were too lazy to even try to make it seem like a cohesive album by giving it like a title and an album artwork. They didn't care. Yeah. They, which is it's uh it's so funny. It's it's it's, it's just funny. Like it, it, it. I'm glad I know that they hate each other now because it makes sense. Before it didn't. It it like when they when they were like trying to give like a more serious reason and not say we hate each other about why they did they made this album the way it is they were like well our last one was just was sergeant pepper and sergeant pepper was all the concept and was so short so we just made one that was like fuck it mm. Mm, yes yes <laughs> yes yes yeah that's a passable excuse could have fooled me possibly <laughs> yeah. if i were none the wiser yeah so uh, yeah um, commence argument yell about some shit i want to hear this <laughs> so <laughs> the thing about the Beatles, and I'm I'm in a similar boat to Cruz. I don't. It's it's okay. Before he starts, if anybody says the Beatles is their favorite band, I do what Cameron oh, yeah, does, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just anything they say about music is re irrelevant. I, I, I agree. Or even like, if they have a Beatles album in their top ten, fuck them. Wait, I, I'm not done. My rant's not over. Fuck, my rant's not over. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah. So like. Okay, so, like, I, I respect that, like, this is, like, where it started, you know? Like, like, 
like like white boy indie rock this is where it started you know like like here you know in the surrounding areas with like sergeant pepper and shit right and like i understand that like modest mouse probably wouldn't exist in its current form without this like ever having existed right or like the beatles in general yeah. however like it is blasphemy for to me to to conjecture that like modest mouse could be worse than this it literally it takes this and then makes it good like it, it literally just improves it in any in any and every way possible to make albums that actually like don't suck you know which is how music is supposed to go it's supposed to like get better by like building and building and to some extent it does and then like this example it does and like it works you know like everything is as it should be you know but oh, no, i just wish we didn't build on rotted wood so yeah <laughs> what you said that this he was, thinks they're built off bad. of this yeah, yeah yeah oh fair enough well i mean I, I, it might be like a, a theseus ship situation where you know at some point the all the rot and wood was just like removed oh okay yeah you, you yeah, know yeah. what i mean we're just so far from it yeah we're just so far from it you know <laughs> It took 30 years, but, you know, we made it. Thank God. So, thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's current year. All right, Alex. Alex, so, I, 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 yeah, like, before, going. before Alex gets to it, I do want to say that if I if I were trying to, like, in, impress you and be, like, and try to, trying to prove to you guys that the Beatles are the best ever, which I don't... Oh, no, you wouldn't pick this, but, obviously. Yeah, I, I, I would have I would have picked Abbey Road, probably, because that's, like, I... Oh, I yeah. thank God you didn't pick Abbey Road. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I wanted to start with was, I want to clarify to everybody that Jack is not claiming any of the views that we're saying we have the big problem with when it comes to the Beatles. Yeah, yeah, Jack isn't the guy... Yeah, I, I, I think they're yeah. good, but I don't think they're the best, and I... Yeah. I don't care for any other albums besides this one and Abbey Road. What my thing with the Beatles is, is I, th I think that influential and important are separate from good. Things sure. can be extremely influential and extremely important. Basically, whatever, whatever the field is, no matter what it is, the first is always extremely important. And the early stuff is always important. But the early stuff is not always good. But what it is, is that there's like... With with the people who are in the Beatles are the greatest band of all time, like Beach Boys was the last time we had real music, all those camps, they're mistaking influential and important for good. When you can have things that are influential and important and good, but when you're my I discount your music taste is when over half of the music in your say top fifty list, if you have oh, over yeah. twenty five yeah. albums that came out before the year 1990. Like, I just assume that you don't actually, like... You're, you're, just... I, 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 you're allowed to do it if you are if you were, like, born before the year 1970. If you were, like, alive in the 60s and some of the stuff is, like, the soundtrack to your childhood, that's fine. But if you were alive... If you were born in, like, 1995 <laughs> and all of the music you listened to came out before you were born, like, I, don't, I, I immediately, like, don't you're think... You're a wannabe that... boomer. You're, what, what Literally is, you're, wanna be boomer. you're you're praising aspects of albums that the only reason you have the opinions you do is because other people who are accredited in the music like sphere have the same opinions that you do because it's not like i'm i'm six years old or I say, it's not like i'm 19 and i'm gonna go to my local record store and find this off the corner uh this album called the beatles by this band called the beatles and oh i'm gonna listen to it and be like this is really good and so I'm going to go on a list of the top 100 albums of all time, and this album is going to be, like, number 30. And I'm going to listen to it and be like, you know what? It is one of the greatest albums of all time. Because, uh... Because... Pull, uh pulls four sentences from the review? Or from yeah. <laughs> because it's... They don't care, man. And it's just... This is... This album, I think, really exemplifies the issue I have with really long albums, which is the concept of filler. Which is, this is an yeah. album where... You can you can remove entire tracks and fundamentally not change at least personally my opinion of the album. That's that's a good point, and, but, that's, and, and why... that's, a, that's an issue I have with a lot of. Long that's why albums. I don't like listening to really long albums because I feel like a lot of long albums when it's when it's long because it's like twenty five tracks. There's a lot of stuff right. you can when it's when it's long because it's you know ten very long tracks. That's a little something different than twenty five tracks very long album. Right. Because you end up becoming victim to the fact that almost everybody likes every song on your album. 
there's going to be filler. There's going to be stuff that you just threw on there. Um, and I think some of the John Lennon stuff um, on here is falling into that category. And it definitely brought the album down a little bit for me from the stuff that I really did like. But what were you saying, Jack? I told you. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, for, first, do you want to point out some of the ones that you thought were filler beasts? For, something that I had uh, when I first listened to it, I actually was mistaking a lot of the George songs for John songs. The, oh, the, the songs one, you, that you, I thought the, were. You, you have the Wikipedia well, article, don't you? The, yeah, I do. <laughs> The two Honey Pie songs, Wild Honey, Wild Honey Pie and Honey Pie, I thought were both filler. I think that it's like the way I had to look at it too is I, I made I looked at where the size of the record ended, like because right. you know obviously this came out in the vinyl days, like right. so even though it's not like the last song on the album, there's a certain weight to the songs that are like the last songs on that side. Right. So it was like I found that like the first three or four songs on the side were like maybe the first two or three were like fine and then it was filler and then the last song so like back in the ussr dear prudence fine and then it's like glass onion obla di obla da wild pie and it's like wild honey pie is like eh. and then the last three on the side one i think are really good bungalow bill i thought was a really good song it's probably my favorite lennon song off the album because it's just it's just a fun song it's a yeah. song that doesn't take itself seriously uh while my guitar gently weeps is a a song that I really like because it's not even really a Beatles song. Like it doesn't sound like a Beatles song because it's just a it's a George Harrison song, really. And then Happiness yeah. is a Warm Gun. I I like the lyrics, at least. And then you get to side two and it's like it's still good. Rocky Raccoons, I think my favorite song off the album, <laughs> which I think oh, is good, uh, good good choice. That's a good I one. really I it's like my favorite, that that's my I like, favorite song of the album. I like Paul McCartney going country. I think it's really funny and I think it's really I'm just another fun song. It's a song with a story, which I think is really cool. And then don't pass me by. I also like. I was I was with Cruz on that one, but like, why don't why don't we do it in the road? I will and Julia. I was like, they're kind of just ex. I don't know why they were really there, honestly. And then side three. Like nothing on this side. I think this is an entire film. Like they wanted to have four sides of an album, so they had to have a whole side of vinyl with music on it. And so they were like side three. No, thank you. <laughs> I I think that Helter Skelter gets way too much credit because the Charles Manson nonsense. Even though really he just took the name more than yeah. anything, yeah, and I, it just gets a lot. I don't think that anything on this side of the album. Even I think that birthday is the kind of song that would have been on like one of the first three Beatles album when it was just pop music, which is like the Beatles yeah. that I'm more inclined to actually be a fan of. It's like, like Baby You Can Drive My Car and like I Want to Hold Your Hand type Beatles, and less of this like we have to make a real artistic statement because we're famous. Um, mm -hmm. And then side four. Um, I don't know what happened to Revolutions 2 through 8, but um, <laughs> I like the single. I guess that's you think they would have been better or worse? You think you said the single mix of Revolution 1 is the is the one that's the faster, like the one that we all yeah, know? Yeah, it's, it's the kind of the, the one that has more, uh, the more electric guitar. Yeah, yes. I like that version definitely better than the, this one. And then the Honey Pie was garbage. Savoy Truffle was interesting. Um, and I thought that Good Night was kind of a weak closer. Just kind of going from, but I think that side three was all filler, and that's 22 minutes of the album you can shave off. Right. Which I think it's is actually, something that's really important when you think about how long the album is. Right. So the thing I was going to bring up earlier is that, well, when when I uh, was talking to uh, when when I when Cameron was talking about making Mark Kozlek shorter, and I was like, oh, you're trying to make it a single disc. That's a actually a very very fun and popular activity to do among Beatles fans is to try and trim down the white album to a single album. Um, yeah, only it's four songs. <laughs> Bungalow Bill, Guitar Gently Weeps, Don't Pass Me By, Rocky Raccoon, EP. Because it's been a single. Um, Happiness is a warm gun. And then cut the rest. Yeah, Mother Superior Gumpty Gun's a good line. What, yeah. Okay. And what it is. A lot of the problems. Like. A lot of my early music days comes from the fact that my dad listened to a lot of classic rock, and I base a lot of my opinions on broader classic rock off of what my dad was into and his rationale for what he was into a lot because he doesn't like the beatles very much but that's just because he's not into like he doesn't like early beatles and so he never got into listening to late beatles and they don't really play beatles music a lot on like classic rock radio for some reason i'm not actually really sure why that is but you actually don't really hear a lot of beatles on classic right. rock radio um which is i guess john that's just something else but so I kind of I, when I listen to this when I listen to this it's it, I should say it's this, it's a section of the album because this is the 2018 mix 
of the white album but it's not the whole five hour um yeah yeah I mean, it's, it's just the it's the just white the actual album. album the yeah. actual album yeah and so i was listening to it i listened to it a couple times and i was like i was trying to figure out what i could say that i don't like about it without just blaming the the fan base even though the fan base is like awful yeah could you listen really to i would drums? say i would say probably 80 percent of the problem because the thing is i don't think that the instruments are that bad because they're not there's never been a point where the Beatles are like we're the best bass players, guitar players, keyboardists. Paul McCartney and kills it in some songs. Oh yeah, Paul is yeah, a great bassist. But, but he but he never self identifies as like yeah, yeah. this like nobody ever points to the Beatles and says the Beatles is like musically what music should do. Yeah. Like, well, at least not like like conceptually maybe, but not like technically, you know. Right. Yeah. Nobody nobody's like. They talk about them as songwriters before music as, as musicians. Yeah. We're just again structurally too, like yeah. You know, like like conceptually and musically for, for sure before it's instrumentally. And I was just thinking about it's just like, and I was reading about what they were saying about the album, and I was reading that everything that was like a criticism of the album had a like had an attachment that was like this is what the band said when this was brought up. And I thought about the fact that it's like so what they did was they took and anything that was a criticism or was something that people didn't like about it, they had an excuse for or like an explanation for as if you have to have an explanation for why people don't like things and they're not allowed to just not like them it's like oh the album wasn't cohesive it's like well we were we weren't cohesive as a band and that's why it doesn't sound like it's all together it's like okay it's oh, like, it, oh, there's, a, there's a lot of I, filler music it's like oh yeah well there's a lot of filler but like you know or, or i was reading i think it was glass onion was the one i was reading about specifically where it said that john lennon said that when he i feel like it was john lennon that wrote the lyrics yeah um he was saying that when he wrote them, it's the same way that I Am the Walrus was allegedly Wait. written to make fun of people who were trying to read too deep into Beatles lyrics and they yeah. were just going to put nonsense in. And I think that at that point, it's like, it's like, why do you have to do that? Like, why do you have to, if you're going to make a song that's like, you know, this song is here to do, to have this purpose, I feel like you shouldn't have to explain what the purpose is for the purpose to work, if that makes sense. It's like, you shouldn't have to say like, oh, you, you know why Glass Onion's got weird lyrics? Because we're making fun of the fact that you people read too much into the lyrics. Because we're not actually writing lyrics that mean anything. We're just writing stuff that we think is fun. But we're going to write some songs that have really meaningful lyrics, like Blackbird and like Revolution and stuff. And those ones you can read into. But we don't want you reading into, you know, Glass Onion. Like that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a noob trap. You're not a real Beatles analyst if you read into Glass Onion and I'm the Walrus and Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds and shit. Right, and it's, just, no. it, 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 it's, it's the mentality where the fan base gets very pretentious about it, but it's it's not like they're inventing the, the pretentiousness about it. A lot of it, I think, comes from the band itself. And I, said the band, it, I feel like it's mainly John Lennon himself, um, where they, they started off as what was essentially a pop band, and then they felt like because they were so popular, they needed to make what they would call real art and it's like well you don't you don't have to do something because you're in a position to have like the authority to spread a message and do something about it so you can just make music that you want to make you know you don't gotta at the point that your band isn't working together as a unit you should probably just not make music or else you're gonna end up with stuff that like or else you're just gonna end up with stuff that's not like universally accessible and then, and, but and then you and then you're gonna have to defend it the way that I feel like they're defending it. Well, I, I do want to say about the, the the defending it. It's not necessarily that they had all these excuses for excuses prepared and they were ready for it or something. It's just that they were popular. But there is enough. there is an excuse for everything though. Is what is what I. There's it's, never it's, a point it's, where it's like oh yeah. The thing, that's the thing is, is like most artists will have an excuse for everything. The reason the thing the only thing the only thing that makes the Beatles different is that you know them because everyone kept asking them right the reason you know we know all the excuses about every beatles song is not because the beatles prepare them and we're like you know we know they're going to have these complaints it's because they it's because they had a relatively short career relative to the long lives of paul mccartney and ringo who are still alive you almost said john lennon got damn too soon <laughs> and and you know they're they're still alive and they're still getting asked questions about what the th shit on the albums mean. So you know every so you know rel ten years of a career versus sixty years of them answering questions about that ten year career. It's that's it's actually why... wild that like it was just ten years. It was literally just the decade, and then yeah. it was over. Yeah, so, the re so the so I 
So well, I, I do think you can fairly criticize them for the fact that, like, they didn't make things clear enough in the first place. I don't think you can criticize them for the fact that they have answers for it or that they needed to answer it. I don't necessarily think I have a problem with the fact that they have answers. It's just the fact that there's never an answer that's like... There's never an answer that's like, we didn't have enough time and we needed to get an album out. Or like... Or like, we, you know, oh, that's a, like... Oh, you see, that's never a problem for them. They the, the, concept, the, the concept that it puts off to me is like, everything that we do is either is intentional, and anything that we do that isn't perfect or like, well-received is accidental. It's not like we intentionally try to make something that we thought was really good and it came off badly. It's like anything that came off badly to people is not something we intended. And everything that you thought that was really good and was really enjoyable and powerful is something that we entirely intended to do in the first place. That's more the, of the issue. The I thing have. about that idea is that I, I feel like this album in particular is like really, really actually strongly showcases like the opposite of that. Like on an album like Abbey Road or Sgt. Pepper, right? It's very like heavily curated in a sense where it's like you can, where, I mean, even Abbey Road, there's like little things of like studio gibberish in it but like it's it's on the on those albums and compared to this one it's like you especially hear you like it feels like this has been incredibly curated where everything's intentional right whereas with this album it's like you have a lot of stuff that's just like them just kind of fucking around and being like yeah this is cool right and so and there's no like intent it's I, I don't think that any pretentiousness associated with the album is on the part of the Beatles themselves, except for maybe John with some of the songs. But I write the lyrics weird, so you so you read into them. That shit's so fucking. That's like one of the stupidest things of all time to me. <laughs> I intentionally make the lyrics cryptic so people who really I, I make the lyrics nonsense so that people who are really close fans and really enjoy the music that we make. <laughs> Look stupid in my eyes for for reading what I gave them. Haha. <laughs> yeah, John John famously is an asshole who hates everyone. Uh, well, I think about John. this way too. If Sgt. Pepper was poorly received, like if they were like, "Wow, this is like bad," would the Beatles have been like, "Well, we gave it a shot and it's bad," or would they have been like, "Yeah, but we were pressured into it because we had put a bunch of normal stuff out and we had to do something different and we had to do this weird thing with it because we didn't want." Well, I mean, to every every artist is. Most, I mean, most people are defensive of something that they make, that they, that you know, is a message out from them. That's a, you know, that there's a na natural inclination to be defensive. Um, and yeah, when when the, the Beatles did put out a bad album like uh, Let It Be, which was the final Beatles release, even though it was recorded before Abbey Road, which is weird. Um, but like when that came out, there were excuses that they made, in particular. Uh, Paul was very adamant that the uh, producer who was hired to assemble the tracks was uh, um, just fucked it up. But if like John himself was just like, yeah, we didn't care. We played awfully on that album. So like they're like, I don't think that, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because like, you know, even though John was the one who was pretentious in his songwriting, Paul was the one who was pretentious as, like, an artist on the broader scale. Because it's, you know... Because they went to India and they know about real music. Well, I, well I, you know, George and John were the ones who were, who were really, into the, really into the psychedelic stuff, you know? But, um... George's songs were decent. But, you Ooh. know, when they... Their manager died, like, before Sgt. Pepper, and they had no idea what they were doing. So Paul basically was like, yeah... I guess I'll decide what we do. And so then he was like, let's do Sergeant Pepper. And then he was like, okay, let's do the White Album. And he was like, okay, let's do Abbey Road. And so like all those, all the the later Beatles albums have some kind of like, I wouldn't say like a high concept. He's like, on, like only Sergeant Pepper really has a high concept, but like all of them have some kind of like gimmick to them or they're like, they're like designed as a project first. And like Paul is kind of pretentious in that way. And he does, and he he is kind of defensive of it when it goes wrong because when, when uh, Let It Be went wrong, he was defensive of it and tried to shift the blame to Phil Spector who produced that album. Um, but 
I don't really feel like that applies to the, the better Beatles albums. And then one because of the they, second they, one of the uh, go sorry. Because they did just they I was just going to say the better Beatles did just work out. That's fair. And then the secondary thing about I I don't want to just shit on the Beatles all day because we we I don't want to keep it going for another three hours. But <laughs> I know this isn't like if you had took a list of all the Beatles albums and you talk about which ones are going to be near the top of all time. I know this one isn't like there's at least two or three that probably go before this one, but this one is still up there. In terms yeah. of like, there's probably five I would say that are like tossed around as like, is this the greatest album of all time? Yeah. Stuff. And it, I just don't see why. I don't know what it is about. Maybe, maybe in in the 1960s when this was, you know, when there was very little to compare to, maybe this was definitely up there. But I just don't think that now you can listen to this and listen to music that came out, you know, 50 years after this. Or maybe you know maybe forty years after this at least, mm-hmm. and be like, this is still this still holds up, as, you know. Comparative to other things that are still coming out today and things before it and after it and does all that like this this is like, special in a way that makes it the greatest of all time. This is an album that for me is one of those like, it doesn't offend anybody and it's more of the same. And if you like more of the same, it'll be a high rating. And if you don't like more of the same, then it'll be a low rating. I don't know why this one, or most of the Beatles music really, for me at least, would really be up there on like the critical radar, aside from the critical radar of the time. Right. Because I, think... I, I don't know what a music critic who's reviewing music in the 1990s gives a fuck about this album about. Like, if he wasn't alive when this album came out, I don't know why you give a fuck about this album. Because it's just, it's old, it's just, it's older stuff. And that's not to say that all old music's bad. And that old music can't be good, but it's like this is just like generic old music. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it generic. I mean, there. Is, I mean, actually, some of it is, and some of it is like very indicative of the time, and some of it is especially like the songs that are uh, Paul's Patiche songs, where he's just trying to like parody another genre. Like those are kind of generic for the genres they're trying to parody, but like I said, Patiche, it's pastiche. It's pastiche. I don't, whatever. Um, they, like, it's not, the thing that makes it, the, well, the Beatles ascend above the others is, like, quality songwriting in, like, just, like, having all, everything work out in the final details. A lot of times the lyrics are kind of off. Um, but it's, it's like you have people now that are, like, oh, the new Lennon and McCartney. Like that was the big thing for like at least bands in the eighties a lot was like oh yeah people just the new Lennon yeah. so it's, like, it's it's not like people get, stopped giving a fuck about how to write songs yeah like, well, I mean, past then it's like but it, it, but I I believe firmly that it's the fact that it's the first or it's in the beginning yeah and 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 anybody who wants to portray the image that they know a lot about music and are a genuine music critic want to give credit to the influences and don't understand how to give credit to influences outside of praising them. Right. Like, this album is extremely influential, and the band's extremely influential, but something doesn't have to be good to be influential. Yeah. Doesn't have to, it doesn't have to stand up. Because I don't, I don't even understand how you, how you could compare this to some shit that comes out today and be like, the White Album is better than the powers that be. It's like, how do you... What the like, how, you, you can't even compare them on, like... Like, what are you going to say? Like, oh, man, the vocal samples on the White Album are way better than the York vocal samples <laughs> on the Powers. It's like, it's not the same thing. It's like, if you're saying best albums of the 1960s, put the White Album up there, more power to you. Best albums of all time. I want to have a legitimate comparison as to why this album's number one and uh, free, uh, Asuka Rebuild by Free Parking is number 15. Like, I want you to compare those two albums together and give me a real reason why you're able to do that. I'm going to have to talk to that person. It seems pretty interesting. <laughs> My guy, he's almost does so much right, which is why I have that opinion that if more than half of your list, and I'll even edit it to say if more than half of the music on your list is from before the year you're born, is like before like a decade before you were born, then I think that you're it's you want people you want people to believe that you know more about music than you do or that you somehow understand music. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just listen, put music that you like on there. Listen to shit that you like before you listen to shit that people like. Yeah, listen to Super yeah. Rebuild. Fuck them. I'll have more respect for you if Super Discount's your number one album than if like, Ghost <laughs> Out of the Moon's your number one. I definitely enjoyed Super Discount more than this album. Or at the very least, like, jack off, like, you know, Yellow Submarine or something, or like, you know, <laughs> or like, Help. 
as it is your favorite Beatles album, because then at least you're somebody fucking different. You're not there. The there are NPC. there are a, quite a few people who are like, oh, the the Magical Mystery Tour. It's their best because they yeah. they want the guy who's like. Who, For uh, reference, the five that I was saying were Abbey Road, White Album, um, Sgt. Pepper, Revolver, and the one that came out between was it like sixty seven? What the fuck's that one called? Rubber Soul. Rubber Soul. That one. Yeah. Those are the five that I was referencing that are like that's the toss up. Because every other year, Revolver is the best one, and then Sgt. Pepper is the best one, and then Abbey Road the best one, and then Rubber Soul, and then it keeps going. Yeah. And, I, um, if you're the... over 60, feel free to enjoy the Beatles, but if you're under 60, <laughs> you're a poser. <laughs> so there's I, nothing worse you can be. What I'll say about whether or not they hold up is that I think that this album in particular holds up specifically because of the fact that it is a double album so much filler. I actually am very grateful for filler because I feel like half of the songs that I really love on this album would not be on the album if it were a single album like rocky raccoon would probably i would think would be well, cut i guess another thing about the songs that i really like are the songs that i guess to them were filler but like in like the songs that i think that they were really into might have been, is what i consider the filler but they would have considered like the important stuff on there so i agree with what you're saying yeah but like at least my by my view of what the filler is the filler needs to go but the, yeah, that's, that's I, th- I think I think the Helter Skelter is more filler than Rocky Raccoon is or Bungalow Bill or something, honestly. <laughs> because at least in, at least in the concepts like we're gonna do our take on different genres and we're gonna do some stuff instead of like we're gonna do some hard hitting social commentary. Helter Skelter is not trying to be hard hitting social commentary. That's that's at all. what it became, even if it wasn't meaning to. That's what it yeah. became. Yeah. And, I mean, and I mean, that's not their fault, I guess necessarily, but that's just the way it ended up. Yeah. They didn't do a Mark Coast leg on it. Helter Skelter was kind of another meme song from Paul where he was like, he just kind of came in one day and was like, hey, what if we just turned everything as loud as we possibly can? Because, uh, you know, the Who is talking about how heavy their song is. We need to make something heavier. So that's how Helter Skelter happened. He's like, it, if you actually listen to, I wish I know what none of you guys are going to, um, if you guys actually, actually listen to the uh, lots of demos that came, that came with the reissue, 2018 reissue, um, there is one of an older version of Helter Skelter that's more of a like slower blues rock jam, akin to like Revolution. Oh, yeah. Also, fuck all the blues rock influence on this album because they they murdered the genre. <laughs> the Beatles killed blues rock. Yeah. Blues rock was cool until fucking George Harrison played guitar. Yeah. On. yeah. <laughs> Cruz and Cameron, do you have any other thoughts now that my uh, our war is done? I think that. Uh... Going off Cameron's point that it's the most unintelligible, like disjointed album. It's a that makes it a bad album. That, they, that <laughs> the albums are all right, to me, in my definition, as as an opinion, would have to say that if you're an album, an album needs to be intelligible. It needs to be this one cohesive unit that does whatever you're trying to do, even if it's you know doing whatever fucking. Jeff Mangum and the guy from The Strokes were doing in uh, Major Orders and the Adam <laughs> Machine. Like, you, you do you and you do it right. But this this is so fucked. And it, it, it's a bad album. Um, I, I also think that it's really cool that since it's such a big band, that you can get the demos of, oh, this song was a blues rock song. And maybe that's why people like the Beatles so much is because they can, you can peer into it. As like what what really goes on behind the scenes, and also that they're mega. I huge. think you, I, I think it's I think you can only do that because people like the Beatles so much. Yeah, and, that, and that's what's special about. The I, Beatles. I do think that I, I think, think that, I think that's, that's has, cool. I think that's. I think that has contributed to their longevity. Is, is that longevity? Longevity. I'm really fucking good at English, by the way. Um, I, I, I do think it's contributed to their their continuing success and relevance. Is the fact that young songwriters and young musicians can easily peer into their creative process because of how much material that has been released from them um and and that can only happen because they were so big yeah and so it it is kind of a self-perpetuating thing you know in a way um i i personally look forward to next year when they do this for abbey road and i get to hear all the the demos and shit for that because i mean i i actually listened to quite a few of the uh five hours of fucking material that released this thing um oh yeah i i it's not important no but we did uh i did put in the 2018 mix into the thing particularly because uh back in the day stereo was considered a gimmick (laughs) so 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 if you listen so if you listen to the original stereo mixes for all the beatles albums they're awful and they're like there's so much hard panning 
and there's stuff where like things will go back and forth between it and it'd be like ooh spooky it's stereo it's going it's moving around you know <laughs> <laughs> that's so fun so, so yeah that's that's that, so that, that's, that's why the the 2018 mid mix exists so i have some few final points um after some silent deliberation i have uh given this a zero um <laughs> I so I take back what I was talking about for like three to five minutes. Um, it is a zero. Um, I hate this album. If it were sixty minutes, it could it would be a one probably. But it's it's ninety minutes, so it's a zero. Um, in the words of Anthony Fantano, there we go. and he he didn't say this in reference to this album. Oh, I hope I wish he did. But I wish he did. This album literally sounds like it doesn't matter. <laughs> what do you say and that in reference to? Jaden Smith's new album. <laughs> oh, savage. And that's all I have to say. You know, in closing, like the Beatles if you like the Beatles. No. And that's it. Like the Beatles if you like the Beatles. Don't like the Beatles. Oh, and, I mean, someone else does? You know, you can say that about all music, but especially the Beatles, because you really gotta have a reason to like the things you like. And if you can't defend the Beatles, if your reason that you like the Beatles and you think the Beatles are the best band of all time is they're influential and they're important, then you gotta re... You gotta start over. You gotta, it's not even you don't gotta get taste. You or just, just, just give up on music as a hobby. Just do something else. It, I, I would be more okay. If, I would be more down. okay if your response to why do you think the Beatles is the best band of all time? If your response was because I like them, I think there's <laughs> a better response than because they're influential or because they're important. Because there's plenty of shit that's influential and important. You know what's really influential? I don't know. Fucking swans. Napoleon. Cigarettes. Not the, not the band, <laughs> but like the animal. You know what's really influential? Hitler. You know what's really influential? Mm-hmm. This podcast. It doesn't have to be your favorite podcast, but if you love it, love it. And if you don't, well then... Well, it you know, has to be your favorite podcast. It's take the, the best hike. podcast that's ever existed. Amen, and that does reflect the board of the trustees' views. Yeah, and of the uh, board of trustees. Our stockholders. Oh, something... Uh, one, one, one last thing about the Beatles that uh, I, I was about to uh, say, and I don't know why I didn't say it, um, is that, you know, in regard to, like, whether or not it holds up over time, I don't think most of their material holds up over time. Good. Um, but I, I do think I I do think that in particular this album does not because not as a whole, but because there's so much material on it and such a variety of styles of such a consistently a consistency of songwriting quality that there is bound to be something that most people will enjoy if they listen to it. It covers all the bases. Cover, it covers all the bases, and um, and I also do believe that Abbey Road ho- uh, holds up. I actually, I was actually thinking earlier this week that I should have picked that one because I was listening. What's to the it a big lot, song but... off Abbey Road? What's like the big single? Um, there's a lot. Sunshine of um, Your Love. Sunshine of Your Love. Is that the one? Is that the one that has um, Is that the one that has fucking uh, money and time on it? This is on Abbey Road. <laughs> Abbey, Abbey Road. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's not a Beatles song. <laughs> um, oh, okay. oh, here comes the sun. Yeah, it has, yeah here comes it. the sun. The it has it has something. Oh, it's got come song. together. It also has come together. Is that's the album. It also has the most infamous of Paul's granny songs, Maxwell Silver Hammer. Oh, it is when I'm 64, not the most infamous of Paul's granny songs. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a granny song in a more literal sense. I feel. Okay. <laughs> but overall, um, you know, listen to the music you like to listen to, and listen to the music that we like to listen to on We Listen to Music FM. Damn. Yeah. In, con- in conclusion, you know? I'm seventy to eighty-five percent sure that Mew is a noob trap. Oh <laughs> yeah, that- I'm seven. I'm seventy to hundred percent sure that the White Album is a five out of ten. Cool. Oh, it's a, it didn't say Texas out of ten. Zero. Yeah, zero. <laughs> get me out of here alright Cruz uh, we'll see y'all next week <laughs>